Alright, hello ladies and gents, welcome back to another episode of the uh, most must-see career mode on the YouTube space. I mean, obviously it's on the Twitch space as well, but like, um, and it's obviously not the most must-see anymore because it's on the previous game, but I digress. Welcome back to another episode of the Hartlepool United Youth Academy Road to Glory career mode. Um, yeah, of course, it's on v 23. I was going to do a second part of the Fulham rebuild over the weekend, but uh, I didn't. Saturday, I was busy. Sunday, actually, Saturday, I was fine. I just didn't really feel like streaming. And Sunday, I was busy, so I was unable. But anyway, we are back with the career mode. I will do the full rebuild at some point. But of course, it's going to be a busy week this week because I've also got deadline predictions to do at some point for the NXT show. Um, I'm trying to think where to how to get it all in one kind of setting, really. Well, one week, so I can fit all the streams in. But should be okay. Anyway. That's a thing for future me to sort out, but this is what we've got for today on tap then for the video games, the actual matches. Um, we've got Norwich to kick off at Victoria Park. We then travel away to the Emirates Stadium to face Arsenal, coming back to Victoria Park to face West Ham, and then we head into December where the fixture build-up is imminent, and we kick off December with two difficult fixtures. Uh, I can't speak, apparently. Uh, we go to Anfield to play Liverpool, and then we come back to Victoria Park to finish off today against Manchester City. And then for episode 5, we'll finish off December with Luton, Everton, Brighton, Chelsea and Brentford. And then we'll move into January to see what awaits us there. So it's going to be interesting. Very soon we'll be in the January transfer window. I don't think we need to change anything though. I'm happy with everything at the moment. I don't think it's been a, a bad or weak area, to be honest. I think everything is going hunky-dory as it stands, but... That could change between now and then, but I suppose at the moment I'm very happy with everything. I don't think there's any issues currently. I'm just trying to think what I want to use against Spurs. Is it Spurs first or is it Norwich first? I just read the calendar. We played Spurs last episode, didn't we? We did, didn't we? We did. We kicked off last episode against Spurs. 3-0 win over Tottenham purely because they had a man sent off and we took advantage of the extra man that we had and we won 3-0 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We then defeated Manchester United 3-1. I don't really know how, to be honest. We got two early goals, I believe. Man United got one back and then just pressed us for the equaliser. And then very late on, we had a counter to seal the game, or steal, I guess, would be the correct word, steal the game. We then drew 3-0 with Burnley. Uh, that was a game I gave Higgins, which probably shouldn't have done, but... We give him a try, and it seems like he needs a bit more seasoning before he gets ready for the Premier League, which is fair enough, which is fine. We know that now. We then bounced back with a 4-0 win over Bournemouth, packed them in and sorted them out. And then we lost once again to Leicester, who seem to just have our number in this career mode. Uh, they defeated us in the Carabao Cup round of 16, I think it was. I'll have to VAR that. Either way, we're at the Carabao Cup. Um, just TLDR, just to, just to let you know. We are out of it. Quarterfinals, yeah, so we could have got knocked out around the 16. That's fine. Uh, another club that's quite big got knocked out around 16 as well. Well, a couple of clubs, actually. Manchester City knocked out by Sunderland, as well as Chelsea being knocked out by Everton. It's a bit of a shocking one, really. And uh, The quarterfinals are Fulham versus Bournemouth, Everton versus Sunderland, Watford versus Liverpool, and Wolves versus Leicester, which I'm intrigued in because they're both teams that seem to have grown in this career mode so far. We still don't have our FA Cup game yet. I think it's still round one. They still haven't played round one yet. So we'll figure that out when we get there. But anyway, we are in the Premier League then. We have got Norwich to kick off proceedings. Um, and I think that's everything covered, signed, sealed and delivered um, in terms of catching up. I did check D up there. His stamina is a little low. That's an issue. We're going to have to bring in Moresco, I think, for this game in that spot. I know he's only 71 defending, but... What we're going to do is not that. I went to Squad Hub, but it didn't scroll far enough. So that's cool. Is there any way I could get Moresca's defensive stats better? I think he's had his, uh, his potential, hasn't he? So Ball winning midfielder, perhaps. Balanced. Balanced would take 98 weeks. Ball winning midfielder. I would try and get his defensive stats up, because we don't really have a backup for uh, Malik Diop. So, Moresco will probably be that for the rest of the series, to be honest, unless we find somebody world-class. But for now, I think that's probably how we're going to go. But anyway, as you can see, this is how the table looks. Little update. Wolves sit top. 
uh, of the table with 23 points. Spurs is second with 22. They're just one point behind. We are just three points off the top of the table with 20 points. Identical do uh, goal difference to Wolves, which is interesting. Uh, Chelsea complete a top four there. Arsenal fifth, Newcastle sixth. Our nemesis is... Nemesis, I should guess. I don't really know how to say it. Nemesis is... Nemesis? I don't know how you say it. But anyway, Leicester in seventh. They're our nemesis. A uh, nemesis team, I suppose. Man City down in ninth. Uh, Liverpool down in 14th with Manchester United. Languishing down in 17th. And the big game for this weekend is Man United versus Liverpool. But I don't know if you count that as a big game because it's 14th versus 17th at this point in career mode. But anyway, that's fine. Taking a look then at the news before we head in to this game against um, Norwich. Prieto debut. It wasn't his debut. He, we've seen him play before because he scored past us in the league. Carabao Cup review. Leicester versus Hartlepool. Leicester City have run out of victories in their latest tie in this season's Carabao Cup. A tense match which had looked even the match on paper. They triumphed over bitterly. Disappointed Hartlepool team 4-1. Yeah, bit of a problem there because this man came on and just destroyed us. Prieto grabs braces. Leicester beat Hartlepool. Prieto was in superb form for Leicester City scoring two goals to power side to a 4-1 against Hart a 4-1 win against Hartlepool United. And pretty much, I guarantee, or not maybe guarantee, but there's a big chance if we do get top four, Leicester don't. Don't be surprised if we make a move for this man. He's ridiculous. Gabri Vega getting a hat trick for Wolves against Swansea. Um, he's quite good at his point in career mode. Marriage of the Month has been announced as Eddie Howe. The award comes after a great run from his Newcastle side as they try to defend their Premier League title. Hartlepool take on Norwich. That is us, and that is them, of course, as we know. And I think that's everything. Oh, we've got play, uh, Premier League Player of the Month shortlist. We don't have... Oh, we do have a nominee. Um, Garnacho of Wolves, Tell of Wolves, Jao Pedro of Newcastle, and then Achille Blanchard of Hartlepool United. So we do have a nominee in there. And as you can see here, the big game of the weekend. Manchester United versus Liverpool. Northwest Derby, of course. No love lost there, but not really a lot to play for. But, well, I mean, but I guess they're both in a relegation battle at this point. Might need a win to get that relegation battle. Liverpool need a win to get the table as well. It's... Not great. And here's some of the biggest deals to end the transfer window, which was all the way back in August. So it's not really a big deal now. We're nearly in December. But anyway, much to just start in November. But by the end of this episode, we'll be in December. But uh, up next then, it is Norwich. I think we've covered everything I need to cover. So let's get the squad selected. Who are they bringing? They've got Broy up front. I know that. They've got Salisu as well. And that Becker. Hold on. Is that Becker kid one of the regions? This, I'm doing a bit of AR in here. I apologise, guys. I won't be second. I've gone the wrong fucking thing. Bear with me. Sorry if you could hear me scrolling. That's Newcastle. That Becker kid, he's one of the regens, isn't he? Yeah, okay. I thought he was a better regen than he was. It seems he's not that good. They've got Zaga doing. They're not using him. Interesting. And, of course, they've got Armando Broya up top, who was quite high in the goal scoring leaderboards last year so keep an eye on him but anyway this is a team they're going to use we're going to switch up a little bit Billy Bull gets to stay in had a great episode uh, we'll give Douglas Moffat a run out it's been a while and he's getting very upset and I'm wondering whether it give Flores a run out too I think we're going to not give Bishop a chance as well Maresco will come in for the uh, tired Diop. And uh, you know what? Jesper Carlson could come in as well. I don't know why, but I like having the bench in res reverse position order. So it does look a bit weird, but it's the way it goes. Um, and that's everyone I want to bring. I do want to bring Wilson actually. I also want to use Barlow. I will, we'll leave Wilson out for this one. He can have a rest. But anyway, this is how the team is going to look for this game against Norwich. I didn't want to over-rotate because we've over-rotated against Burnley and we drew. So I'd like to rotate enough to give players chances, but also win the game. So we're not going to overdo it in terms of rotation. This is a team we've got against Norwich. Nielsen in between the sticks. Moffat and Miranda as the full-backs. Chavez and Bull as the centre-backs. Mareska centre-mid, or CDM slash centre-mid. Diop's tired. He finally gets a rest for the first time in what feels like forever. Uh, Serrano sentiment slash Cam. Bishop left wing. Barlow right wing. With Carlson and Rodriguez up top. Rodriguez captain in the side today. That is a Norwich side, which actually looks quite good. Um, but I, we should beat this. 
I'm, I'm just scared of Breuer, to be honest. I think that's what my main concern is. I'm keeping Nielsen in. I know he can see the four against Leicester, but I'm keeping Nielsen in because I just don't trust Higgins at the moment. We'll maybe give Higgins our chance down the line, but at the moment, uh, Nielsen's the one I've got my faith in, despite the fact that we can't do anything against Leicester ever. But anyway, at Victoria Park to open today's games, it's Hartlepool United versus Norwich. Let's bloody go. What's up, Jordan? Welcome to the stream, mate. As always. Got here on time. We're just starting the this is the first game, so you just got here on time. Stop from you. Now, it's a kind of difficult episode today. We've got Arsenal, Liverpool, and Man City at different times. Two of those games are not at Victoria Park. We've got to go to Anfield and the Emirates Stadium in this episode. The Man City game is at Victoria Park, though. We've also got Norwich and I think it was West Ham today. It should be easy wins. Hope you're well. United are thriving. Huh? Yeah, we're looking fantastic, mate. Honestly, best team in the world. I hate my club. <laughs> Good. Good luck. I knew we were bad, but I didn't realise we were this bad. Well, there's the boys in blue and white. Can we please start with a win? If we don't beat Norwich, I don't know who we're going to beat today. No offense to Norwich, because they've actually been a decent side this season so far. But um, we should be beating Rush is a disgrace on the pitch. Yeah, he's. I don't. I don't know what's happened with him. Ever since he signed that new contract, his, his form seems to have gone way downhill. It's not great for him. He's struggling a lot. Right, Rodriguez kicks it off here at Victoria Park. I got realistic points total today to get from these games. I'd like a win, obviously, against Norwich. Win against West Ham. And then any any out of it, I either take one point or three against the other teams. I think Rodriguez just came off. Uh, oh no, he's outside still. So. Bishop try to turn his man, try to find a way in. It's Asai Samuel closes it down well. Norwich are going to be difficult. Don't get me wrong, I know that. I'm aware of that. It's just we should be beating them. Maresca's going to, it's going to be difficult. Try to go with Maresca at DM rather than using Diop, who we always use, but Diop. Was tired for a first time in what feels like a two years. Uh, Diop was exhausted, so we're giving him a rest. He's on the bench just in case everything goes to shit, but we're not starting him because he's tired. That's a interesting cross, and Bishop can get into it. Horn comes and goes, but he's hardly even trying. Livermental cooked him. Yeah, he's uh, like there's a lot of players in that team now. Just aren't just putting the effort in, and it's irritating to watch. But um, I, I don't know what fixes the club at the moment, to be honest. We're not going to be in the Champions League for much longer, so maybe that that's what we need. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise that we're not in that. Focus on the league a bit more. Try to get it to Bishop again. These crosses ain't working. I will try to get to one of the taller strikers. Carlson's getting a big leap of faith today as well, up top. Let's see how he performs. Marildo Kawe down the line for Norwich. He's turned me inside out, but Bull should have that sorted. And he does. Maresco will bring it away. But yeah, Norwich are going to hold us off quite well here, I think. At least it seems like that in the early going. Bishop. I could have just been proven wrong. Rodriguez. Ah, oh, tried to thread it through to Serrano, but... Not to be. And Chavez just leathers it into Rosette. We're winning every game today, can't lie. I'd love that. I'd love that. I'd probably leave us top of the Prem, or at least in the race. Three points off the top now. If Wolves mess up and we can win all our games, that'd be fantastic. But I think in reality, there's going to be a bit of a struggle somewhere. There always is in these episodes. Good block by Maresca, and that'll be steered towards Nicholas Nielsen. But yeah, I always, I, there's always one game I struggle in, whether I want to or not. 
I don't remember the last time I won 5 out of 5 in an episode. Probably back in League 1 or something. Off it's making it overlap. Ball towards nobody because it's been blocked. Becker with the block. It's going to be thrown to us. We'll take that. But yeah, as I said, I was going to do the second part of the full rebuild this weekend. Uh, Saturday I just couldn't be bothered, really. And Sunday I was busy. So... Sometimes you just need to not stream. I don't, I don't really stream that much anyway. I just couldn't be bothered, really. So I guess we'll see when that... I might do it tomorrow if I've got the uh, time. Good block by Chavez. Because I do want to do that full... I want to get back with that full rebuild again because we've got a Champions League in two seasons. I want to see if I can wrap it up next rebuild. But I'm gonna keep those, I think I'm going to keep those to two seasons uh, uh, an episode as well because... It's slightly shorter and it's slightly easier. I was hoping Bishop would let that out for a goal kick, but he's decided to keep it in, which is fair enough, I suppose, as long as it doesn't cost us here. Don't really know how we're going to counter off of it, but Serrano's making the move. Don't really know what I'm meant to do here. There's nobody on. Oh, Rodriguez. Oh, just the wrong side of the pose. That could have been 1-0, Carlos Rodriguez. Took it on. It just wouldn't curl quite enough into that corner. Unless it was a save. It looked like it might have been a save, but maybe it was just a very close effort. Yeah, no save there. Almost puts in the lead there. Victoria Park, door number nine. Moresca wins it. Bishop sends Kuto to the floor. Serrano overlap. Oh, Moffitt's offside. I mean, stop your run, mate. Like, genuinely. Just stop your run. I don't know why you're continuing. Better to stream when you actually want to and not have to feel like you have to stream constantly. That'll burn you up and make you hate streaming. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of why I take sometimes. That's why I kind of do it every other day. Kind of try to have a day of not doing it plus a day doing it. Kind of. But sometimes there's stuff I want to do multiple of and like day after day. Like for this week. I think he's offside, right? Yeah. Like this week, it's, I've got to do NXT deadline at some point. That'll probably be Thursday or Friday. I want to do another episode of this at some point this week. As well as another episode of the rebuild. So I rebuild tomorrow, this Wednesday. Maybe deadline Thursday or Friday. And then um, potentially one of these on uh, the weekend. I don't know. I, I, it's kind of the uh, schedule I've got in my head. But obviously that could all be subject to change. I've aimed that at Bishop. So I don't know how it's gone there. But yeah, that's kind of the schedule I'm thinking on. Good job by Miranda. I do want, as much as I do enjoy this Hartlepool career mode, I do want to get it finished so I can move on to the rebuilds a bit more properly. Get them done quicker, get them more done. Blocked by Rodriguez, or Rodriguez, it's blocked by a defender, I should say. If it's blocked by Rodriguez, I have questions, he's on my team. For a pass, and Greek uh, picked up by Bull. That was not what I wanted to do, but it could work, actually. Off it to Bishop. Serrano. I wasn't wanting to go back to Bishop, but Barlow works as well. Serrano. Carlson. Oh, straight out to Ritter. That's Carlson's first involvement in the game. He is quite a good striker, but he's a fourth choice. So giving him time is difficult. But with uh, Blanchard struggling and Carpenter struggling as well, Carlson might have a look in a little bit more. Not with Rodriguez, because Rodriguez has found his scoring boots, and I like it a lot, but... I wonder what could have happened if I had accepted that offer from Real Madrid, you know? Good block by Bishop. That was for Carlson. I don't know why he's avoided it. Miranda. Back. Oh, trying to get back to Serrano. Why did Carlson avoid that pass? <laughs> Quite clearly for him. Sleep over it unless they score. Moffat will get it cleared up with no problem. No goals yet. Which is fine. We've had the chances. We just need to find the goal. Serrano. Carlson through the gap. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh, well. 
if you want to make a starting case for yourself, yes, but Carlson, that's the way to go about it. Carpenter and Blanchard have been struggling in front of goal, but that was cold, calm and collected and cheeky as you want from Jesper Carlsen on the stroke of half time. He gets played through onto his weak foot and just dinks the goalkeeper. And it's 1-0 Hartlepool just before the break. That is foul. That is disgusting. I love it. Jesper Carlsen, his first Premier League goal this season. That's how you score it, mate. And if he wants to make a name for himself, he's going the right way about it. Some more game time on the horizon for this kid. Especially if our main ones ain't performing. And just before the break as well, that's perfect timing. That's absolutely brilliant timing to put that ball in the back of the net. That was slutty. <laughs> it was. It was a slutty goal. If there was ever a slutty goal, that was it. 1-0 at the break then. Yes, but Carlson scored that delicious chip to give us a slender lead. At Victoria Park, it, it's been coming, let's be fair. We've been the better team. But um, that pass through as well, I've got to credit that pass through. Yes, but Carlson stayed on side and it was a great finish as well. 65 to 35 in terms of possession, four shots to one. Not been a lot of shooting in this game, but the ones that have been shot have mainly come from us. They've had a shot as well. I don't even remember what their shot was. So that kind of shows how much Norwich have been in the game, really. 0 0.6 expected goals to nothing. It's been quite a boring game, hasn't it? But honestly, um, Norwich have been quite good defensively. And we've been quite good defensively as well. It's kind of been even. Moffitt's been quite good today. And I can see why he wants more game time. I understand why he wants more game time. But with Aiden Sutherland at the club, it's difficult, you know? The club heroes returned. I knew Moffitt may not like it, but... He knew, I think Moffat knew that it was going to be a few less games from him. But I think Moffat should play a bit more than what he is, because we're really not giving him as much as he deserves. I panicked here a little bit. They're pressing it fuck in the second half here to start off. We've got away with Chavez. Moffat now. Maresca. Bishop. Waiting for Moffat to make that run, which he is doing, to be fair. Ball through. Douglas Moffat. We're going to try and find the ball in. It's back post towards Barlow. It's heavy. Serrano tries to go up for it. Rodriguez should win that. It's because of Bishop. It's not quite how I wanted the pass to go off. I was wanting Carlson to go edge and Bishop to pass edge. So neither of the men did their job correctly there. But I'm not going to have a go too much. Moresca. Done all right today so far. Good tackle by Chavez. On the move, Niko Jankovic or Nino Jankovic. It's like a region. I don't know who he's the region of. Never seen him before. Oh, Carlson couldn't get enough of it. I tried to just side foot it past the goalkeeper, but it's it's not enough power, unfortunately. Give it a second for the young Swede, and it wasn't fortunately. Ball into Nunez. Looked like Darwin Nunez with that shot. Easy for Nielsen to hold on. Moffat at right back, perhaps. Possibly, but we've got Flores there. Although Moffat did go right back when he initially started at the club. But I do also do like Miranda as well. Miranda's been very good. Great save from Nielsen. Had to wake up a little bit there. But yeah, though, Miranda's come in and he's actually made that right back spot his own. Solid every game. I've not seen him drop a bad rating yet, I don't think. Call Real Madrid, I'm telling they can have him. Carlson, my star boy. I mean, uh, Real Madrid... Come back if you want if you want with my strikers, mate. Carlson will go uh, we'll go with Carlson for the rest of the season. Really to take a goal to be fair. I switched my centre back, no? No, alright. So I pressed LB I'm gonna say three times. To switch to Billy Bowl there. And um It just ignored me. It was like we aren't we aren't gonna switch to your uh, centre back there. Liverpool sauce in. I mean, they nearly lost yesterday. That would have been funny, but they recovered it. So fair play to them. That McAllister goal was beautiful. I've seen people say it's better than Garnacho's, which is false news, but it's definitely a very good goal nonetheless. Norwich are really pushing back in for this equaliser or trying to. We need to find a way to make sure they don't. Realistically, I'd like to score a second, but it was hard enough scoring that fucking first one. Oh, Miranda. Poor movement. I've have hyped him up as well. Defensively, he's good, but offensively, we've not seen much of him yet. That's offside. 
Oh, he's letting us play on. Okay. Bye bye me. I thought we were going to call it back. Moffat. Going to try and get down to Bishop. Make some changes soon. Right, we'll make those changes now. We've got Arsenal not long after this. And they're going to make some changes as well. Marildo Kawe coming off for Sully. So we're going to make some changes as well. And as much as I like Carlson. In fact, actually, what's the point of bringing Carlson off? There's no point bringing Carlson off. That's a dumb idea. I'll bring on Bobby Hobbs. And um, I don't really know what else to bring on, to be honest. No one else has been really that bad. We'll just do Hobbs for now. See if anything changes. Easy to assume you switch players when you uh, click the switch play button. Yeah, it's funny that. I thought when I pressed to click the button to switch my player, it would switch the player, but no. Serrano, nothing against him today, but he's a bit, a bit off colour, but also save him for Arsenal, because he'll probably score a banger against them. Oh my luck. Which is fine. I'm not going to complain. Moresco gets the throw in from Moffat, who has been solid today. Bishop gets caught. I was thinking of bringing on Wilson, but I don't actually think I brought him on the, the uh, trip here. Resting Wilson for the big game against Arsenal as well. There's a couple of, ga uh, a couple of games, a couple of players were resting for the Arsenal game. It's a big one. They're actually below us on the table, which isn't too bad. The only, the only two teams above us just now are Wolves and Spurs. Oh, Carlson tried to thread it through, but thread it through to the wrong man. Good tackle by Bull. He has been great. That's just unlucky bouncing. Billy Bull has been good. Go on, Chavez. Nice one. Seems like Bull and Chavez actually seem to be good now. Barlow. Ball over. All the way through to Hobbs. Edge of the area, perhaps. To Carlson. It's not too. What a save. Rodriguez can't get the follow up. I assumed. I was so sure that was the second goal. Bishop. Oh, the Ritter is trying to keep Norwich in it, man. My FIFA's fucked. Just as the EAFC app has been closed, this is a result of the app being terminated. That's fucking weird. Maybe it's something to do with the actual app on your phone. I don't know. But I loaded that up this morning, and it was fine for me. So I remember the device. What do you what do you play on, uh, Demon Ed? So I'm on the Series X. And it's okay for me. PC. Ah, right. Yeah. Sometimes it can be crashes on that. But it's just a matter of. I don't really know how to fix it, but I know there's been a few crashes on it. That's a, that's the heaviest touch in the world. I don't know about that one. I don't think I touch it that fucking heavy. Can Norwich find an equaliser? I, I don't know how, but they have. I don't know how, but they found the equaliser. I'm a bit upset. I'm going to be very upset if we drop points here, man. Like, oh, man. I messed up a little bit defensively, but I thought Miranda would block it. I don't have any working console. What the fuck kind of bullshit is this? Yeah, it's... I don't, I don't know. How, I wish I knew how to fix stuff, but I have, like, the te technical knowledge of... A baby, probably, at this point. My technical knowledge is quite bad. Bring it on Blanchard, bring it on um, Roberts as well. We need to find a winner out of somewhere now. There might be someone on the Discord server who can help, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure. PC issues wise. In fact I barely know how to do Xbox stuff. But it's working fine for Xbox. It's Hobbs on. Yeah, Hobbs has been brought on. He's always good for a late goal, so I'm hoping. But maybe he'll produce one. As long as I don't care, I don't care who does it. As long as somebody does, I didn't expect them to equalise. I thought Miranda would block that. Oh, they might go on and win it. Honestly, low key, this is not an ideal. Go Maresca. They've had most of the second half, and I'm getting pressured to fuck here. They're pressing me like crazy. Wish I brought Wilson with me now. Oh, Bishop, a oh, Bishop's been struggling in the second half. I really wish I'd brought Wilson on the on the trip here. I can't get out of this fucking situation. They're on me. 
Rodriguez, Roberts now. They've left space though for Ethan Roberts. Ball in Blanchard! Limbs at Victoria Park. I was going to shoot with Roberts, but I didn't want to risk it. And I'm glad I didn't risk it. Oh my God. He's taken limbs against Norwich of all teams. But I don't give a fuck. A win's a win. If we could hold on anyway, a win's a win. Achille Blanchard off the bench, rising to the challenge. And it is 1 1, or 2 1 now, I should say, here at Victoria Park. And he's been popping up a bit more recently. He actually did quite well towards in the last episode, but I'm still not fully convinced of him yet. <laughs> Truly there, Achilles heel. <laughs> Fuck off, that's a good one. Oh, uh, man. Can we hold on? That's a question. How much game time, or how much injury time is EA going to give them to equalise here? Probably a lot from history. Ball in. Wilkinson heads it over. We've got four minutes. Four minutes to hold on. He'll be asked what he's about. Yeah, he'll, I'm sure he'll know the fix to it. If I had any idea that I'd try my best to help you, but I've got, yeah, again, the technical ability of a toddler, so... Just hold on to it, boys. Don't you... Don't you... Don't you stupid here. We could even go for a third if you feel spicy. Uh, you know what? It runs down the clock. It's a good save from Derrida. Technical ability of a demon aid. Nah, I think mine's even below that. I think my water bottle. It's crap on the lock. Right. Run down the clock here, boys. Might as well just call someone in short. I don't usually do this, but... Bobby Hobbs. Sees his opening. Ah, oh, it's closed down. Oh, fuck. No, please. Ref. Thank God. That could have been scary for a moment. That could have been concerning for a little bit there. We could have dropped points against Norwich. And no offence to Norwich, because they've actually been decent this season, but... We could have dropped points there that we didn't need. They have the ref. Thank God. Didn't let them counter. Love to see it. Usually, EA will let them have the counter, but... Not today. Good game to kick off today's episode. Then a 2-1 victory. Carlson scoring that beautiful chip. Uh, Nunez equalising for Norwich. Not that one, by the way. A different Nunez. And then Blanchard off the bench to secure three points for us. It got scary. I knew they were going to keep attacking, but I did actually expect them to score. I thought we could keep the uh, clean sheet today. Take a look at the stats anyway. 65 to 35 in terms of possession. 11 shots to 7. 2.9 expected goals to 1.6 as well. I'd have been pissed if we dropped any points there because we deserved that and we've dominated that. But uh, it could have gone wrong. It could have gone upside down. Take a look at the ratings. Man of the match then, absolutely. He was on the pitch for, what, five minutes? Blanchard gets man of the match. Of course he does. Getting the winning goal and sending Victoria Park into disarray. It is a goal and an 8.2 from the Frenchman. Chavez, a strong defender, as well as Bull. Both of them brilliant centre-backs today once again. Bishop, I felt like he struggled in the second half, but a good game overall, apparently, according to EA. Rodriguez was trying, just not succeeding today. It was one of those days. Carlson with a brilliant finish, getting a 7 rating. The assist coming from Roberts off the bench. Roberts and Blanchard linking up as I subbed them on. That was the tactical masterclass, by the way. Bring on Roberts, bring on Blanchard. They both contribute to the winning goal. You're fucking welcome. Anyone who supports Hartlepool. Assist from Serrano as well when he was on the pitch. I didn't realise he assisted the goal from Carlson. I thought it was a Rodriguez assist, but it was actually Serrano. 6.6 .6 for him anyway. Not a fantastic performance. Uh, Maresca did better than that, I thought, but the game has gone against it. But I do prefer Diop in that place. But because he was tired, couldn't really use him. Nielsen, seven shots, or sorry, five shots on his goal. Four saves, one conceded. But that goal was nice. After the Norwich goal was quite nice. But I thought it would be shut down by Miranda. I want to see that chip again from Carlson. That was just rude. Uh, it was Serrano who assisted. Great ball through. Just dinking it over the top. Right before half time as well. 
if there was a goal to or a time to score a goal, there's no better time than that. Just a beautiful little dink for his first Premier League goal of the season. Not a lot of minutes in the Premier League, but if he keeps scoring like that, he'll get more minutes. And then the winner that got us the limbs, of course, we got to show the limbs. Roberts in acres of space. Blanchard back stick. Manages to get in front of his man and nods it in to break the hearts of the Canaries. Not sure if it's worked, same thing, or if it... I'm not sure if it's the same thing or if it worked, but it's like... Oh, right, okay, fair enough, yeah. Try and click on that link he made to see if it's... Uh, see if it's any help. You missed the limbs. <laughs> That's fine. The limbs are on screen right now. Achille Blanchard getting us out of jail with a late, late winner. As for Norwich ratings, I don't think I checked them, um, but their man of the match was Marcelino Nunez, who got the equaliser at that point for them and thought that Norwich were on track for a point. Nana, nah, not happening on my watch. Uh, Amanda Breuer with the assist and 7.2, and then these are the rest of the ratings and the overalls of the Norwich team. I reckon this team stays up, you know, again, it doesn't look awful. There's a, pr uh, a few improvements they could make. Um, we could have started Zagadou, honestly, because Becker was only 71 rated, but I suppose... Fair enough, you're going to give the younger players some chances. It's not a bad Norwich team, I suppose. But anyway, post watch interview. Let's see what's going on. Big win, that. <laughs> Bit lucky, but um, we, got the, uh, we got the win, and that's all that matters. It could have gone wrong, could have gone rogue. We brought on Blanchard. Roberts with the assist as well. I can't say we're looking stronger because we nearly fell there, which is because I'm not obsessed with the run. We've done well to keep this run going, but every other team in the Premier League around us is keeping their winning runs going as well, so it's difficult to try and get to the top. Obviously, the goal this season is just to get top four, but if we can get to a Premier League title race, that'd be fun too. Just about did it, just about got over the line. And that was a tactical masterclass of me in the final minutes, bringing on Roberts and bringing on Blanchard because they both linked up for the winning goal. Um, we made the chances of one by more, but their goalkeeper was very good. Our finishing was a bit subpar as well, but their goalkeeper um, did stop a couple of probable goals as well. So you got to give him credit. Norwich put up a fight, but in the end, we come out on top. It looks like Blanchard's headbutting the goalpost there. Prince Ibrahim, it's his potential. Damn it. Potential of 79. He's still very good, though, isn't he? I know I'm not giving him a game for a little while now, but that is because the other defenders have been playing so well as well. Um, and he won't be getting a game probably this episode unless it's a West Ham one, which I might give him because that's probably the best chance he'll get. Billy Bull's been phenomenal again. Back to his, uh, back to his best. Chavez was good there as well. Get seven uh, games out defeat in how much of the season side three players. Yeah, I'm not doing the born in Asia objective mainly because I don't know who to sign, and also it's not the end of the world if we don't do it. I don't. It looks like yeah, it really looks like Blanchard's headbutt in the post. Seven nine potential. Yeah, it's not fantastic, but it's good for a backup, honestly. And he, we know he's good. We know he's solid. I just wish we could have got a bit more from him, but. Not the end of the world. We'll put Sweeper on him, and that should hopefully keep him going for a little while. And obviously, if we need to go in for anybody else, we'll go in for somebody else. But I'm happy with the centre-back ranks we've got at the moment, because we've got Bull and Chavez, who are on form right now. We've got Martin, who can still grow to be something. But I'm still not convinced yet. There's still time. Still plenty of time, obviously. Um, give him a game against Arsenal, just to see how good he really is. And then Ibrahim as well. Solid as well. Blanchard very essentially seducing the goalpost. Yeah, he's into that. Where's that person on the table? I suppose not all the teams would have played yet, so we'll advance to next week. Ah, fucking hiccups. Drop my water too fast. We've got the players on international duty. Let's see who's away then. Billy Bull for England. George Higgins has been called up for England as well. You like to see that. I Tom Miranda for Spain. We've got Jack Cochran, Douglas Moffat, and Aidan Sutherland for Scotland. Bobby Hobbs and Thomas Bishop for Australia. Christopher Olsen for Iceland. And Ike Martin for Germany. Um, I don't want to sound bad to Iceland, but if they have to call up 62 rated right backs, then I think there's an issue there, really. Um, 
especially one that we're going to be hopefully moving on. It's just he doesn't have he doesn't have enough potential for me. Unfortunately, that's why we're moving him on. But anyway, we move to Arsenal, who are in fifth. We are in second. Uh, Spurs dropping points, but Wolves continuing to get victories. Uh, who did they beat? Uh, they would have beaten. I don't know, because that was the cup. They beat Everton, right? Chelsea destroyed fucking Leicester. Wish we could bloody do that. Man United beat Liverpool. You'd love to see it. Gets them out of dumps a bit more. 16th now for Manchester United. Beautiful. But anyway, at the top end of the table, we're still three points behind Wolves. Level up points with Chelsea. Um, it's a close race because there are six teams in it currently. We've got Wolves, Hartlepool, Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal and Newcastle who are all about it. And I'm assuming City will recover. Leicester will probably be in there at some point as well. And I'm, I'm guessing Liverpool, either Liverpool or Man United will be around that a bit further on. Um, but it is the way it is. Not in Forest, West Ham and Luton in the relegation zone at the moment. But we got Arsenal up next. And I'm not excited for this, to be honest. We've got to travel to the Emirates. It could be a thrashing. Um, hopefully the thrashing is by us. But it might not be. So you've got to keep on guard about that as well. So... Not too shabby though to open episode, uh, but I really don't know who I'm going to start for the Arsenal game. We'll have to figure it out in a moment, but take a look at the news after that game. Inspired substitution, Blanchard wins it. Even the fucking game is giving me credit. You absolutely love to see it. Hartlepool United done an inspired substitution by their manager to thank for securing victory. He switched things around early, well it was late on, but I get what you're saying. And brought on Blanchard, who eventually proved to be the player to make a difference between the two teams. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic man he is. Porto beat Trabzonspor. Man United beat um, whoever the fuck that is. And Quentin Timber got four goals. Oh, it's Rapid Vienna, I think. But still, if Quentin Timber scoring four goals, then that's a bit mad. Uh, Hoshek getting three against Shakhtar Donetsk. Former Bradford City career mode legend there, Adam Hloshek. And Hartlepool face Arsenal challenge. This should be a big one. A big one. They've got Dusan Vlahovic up top, I just remembered as well. Hartlepool United believe they can mount a title challenge this season, but their credentials are sure to be severely tested in their next game, which sees them, sees them up against the team just below them in the table, Arsenal. Being the home team, I suggest Arsenal are favourites to clinch the points, but in top of the table clashes like this one, that advantage often counts for very little. The game is more likely to be decided in the favour of the team that best holds its nerve over the 90 minutes. It's a huge one. And as you saw for the uh, Player of the Month nominees, it was Garnacho for Wolves, Tell for Wolves, Blanchard for Hartlepool, and then Jao Pedro for Newcastle United. And as you can see here, it has gone to Matthias Tell of Wolves, who is a scary, scary man. All the Wolves players are scary, scary men at the moment. They've built a hell of a team. Um, tells impressive performances for Wolves. Earned him the Player of the Month award for October. And apparently, we're being linked with Poland. I'm going to be honest with you. I've not seen an offer from Poland yet, and if there was one to come through, I'd probably decline it. Uh, take a look at some other news. Rakow beat Basik Shahir. Ikone got a hat-trick against Aberdeen. If you don't get a hat-trick against Aberdeen, you're quite bad, really. Uh, Rosenborg beat Celtic, and that is everything, I think, for the news. So let's get geared up for this Arsenal game. Before that, though, a pre-match press conference to see what we've got to say on matters in the Premier League. What's the question is going to be? What we get posed? You know, it's great run. Look like you got a real chance to qualify for the Champions League. I hope so. You've heard it. Uh, is your squad big enough to keep up? I mean, I think so. I think we've got a good enough squad to sort it. But I'm biased, so <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much my opinion counts. Pretty close run thing against Norwich in your last game. What's the mood in the campus? You're now prepared to take on Arsenal. Um, what we're doing is working, yeah. We're struggling a bit defensively, but we always have done. But it's actually not been bad at the back. I feel like I've done okay most of the time. Um, I mean, offensively, we could be a bit better as well. Big, big game. We'll win. This isn't a time for predictions. We're not going to say anything. I'm not saying that we're going to beat them. I'm not saying that they're going to beat us. Because, honestly, I don't know where this is going to go. I'd like to win, obviously. It's all part of the fucking game, but... They've got one hell of a team at this point in FIFA, and I don't know how much we'll be able to combat it. Blanchard really likes that bloody goalpost. I'm wondering whether they make that thumbnail. I can't really, because it's writing on it. Damn it. Uh, I'll, I'll figure a way around it. 
If we can get a thumbnail of Blanchard, head back to the post, that might be it. If not, I'll maybe find a better thumbnail for today's episode. But anyway, up next, at the Emirates, it's Arsenal. The good thing is, for us anyway, they're slightly tired. They are quite tired. I'm assuming they're in Europe of some sort. And most of their players will have just played. The fact that they're starting Nuno Tavares eight seasons in is reassuring. But that front three, Martinelli, Vlahovic, Saka's mad. That midfield of Erdegaard and Milinkovic, Savic is mad. I don't know who Yoro is, but he must be good if he's starting for Arsenal. That centre-back partnership of Raul and Laporte is scary. Hakimi at right-back as well. Lafont in between the sticks. They've got a strong side, so we just need to go all out here. Nielsen in goal. Sutherland, Miranda. We're going to bring in Martin for a game. I thought this might be too risky, but we're doing it anyway. He's not had one for a while. And we're just going to go like this otherwise. And I'm hoping that this will be enough. But I don't know. We're going to put Carlson on the bench as well because he actually impressed me in that last game. Seems Bobby Hobbs will drop to the reserves. And that's how we'll roll for this game. It's a bit risky putting in Martin, but he was meant to be the big marquee centre-back signing. I want to see what he can do against the big side. So we're going to go for it. Possibly our strongest team of uh, what we can build up, I suppose. Nielsen in between the sticks, Sutherland as the left back, Miranda as the right back, Martin and Bull as the centre backs, with Diop, CDM, slash centre mid, Serrano centre mid slash Cam, Wilson off the left, Roberts off the right, Blanchard and Rodriguez up top, with Rodriguez captain the side today, it is at the Emirates Stadium, and it is Arsenal versus Hartlepool. I mean, if they win, they go level on points with us, if we win, we could go top if Brighton stop Wolves, so there's a lot on the line for this one but that is the team we're going with that is the team they're going with let's get into it i'm hoping they're tiredness i'm presuming they're in the champions league they're in some kind of european competition anyway but they came second last year so i'm presuming it's the champions league any old way um they're tired from that so we can take advantage of that that would be brilliant if not fair enough they're a good team I'm going in, hoping for a win. But I'm not really sure what I'm expecting, kind of thing. Does that make sense? Five people watching, apparently. If you're enjoying, please leave a follow. I appreciate it. If you already followed, then just sit back and relax. It's a mad fucking Arsenal team. I don't know what their bench is looking like. I mean, the bench isn't too bad. They've got Diogo Dallo, Danny Olmo... Xavi Simmons as well. I think Smith Rowe's quite high rated at this point. It's it's going to be a difficult difficult game. Hype for a GTA 6 trailer tomorrow. I think they'll do a play for that when it comes out. Probably a year or two away still, but you know. Uh, probably, yeah. I'm kind of intrigued to see what they bring in. But yeah, I'll, I'll most likely do something around that whenever it comes out in the next five years. Or whenever. <laughs> whenever it comes out, I'll probably play it. If I'm still streaming by that point. Right, it looks like the Gunners are going to kick this off, which is concerning. Oh no, we're going to kick it off. Blanchard's moving towards it. Right. Jordan saying 4 1 win. I like the confidence, but I don't think it'd be that easy. Um, they only just got past Norwich, but I suppose we rotated a bit for that. This is the full 11. Martin's a bit of a risk, but I want to see what he can do in a big game. Saka going in on Sutherland. Advantage continues. Oh, Christ. Right, yeah. So, Hakimi's going to be difficult to beat. We need to play it down the, the right, is what I game plan was, wasn't it? Game plan was to play it down the right because they got Tavares. Blanchard, it's not heavy enough, or is it? It wasn't, but Miranda made it work. Back stick. Oh, it's caught by Lafont. The 
goal somewhere. I didn't see where the goal was. I'm assuming Wolves. I don't really know. I wasn't paying attention. Roberts keeps the ball under pressure. Miranda. I really like Miranda, you know. Great right back. Despite having a left foot. Worked really well. Not, again, not really bad rating yet. Wilson. Oh, Duncan Wilson. Are you all right, mate? Great touch. Steadied himself. Banged it in. It's Roberts again with the assist, you know. I'm glad we kept Roberts on because he has stepped up a lot more than he did last season. What a touch. Take himself away from the defender. Chested it down. Beautiful finish. And there's a reason that we kept him around. That's not the reason we usually do keep him around. He likes to go for his little runs and they seem to work. But that's still a great finish. And it's an unlikely lead here. I think Serrano blocked uh, LaFont's vision as well, but we're not going to talk about that. Serrano might have been uh, interfering with play, but who cares? 1-0, Duncan Wilson. Only second goal this season, but might be one of the more important ones. I'm not spec uh, expecting numbers like his breakout season, just for record. I'm uh, maybe not saying that he could get 20 goals a season or whatever in the Prem, but... I'd like to see that he can compete still in the Prem, and so far he has. Sutherland gets it off of Saka. Struggling here with Vlahovic. We're going to just try and rotate the play a bit. We do have a lead, though, at the Emirates. Roberts, Miranda. Inside, Serrano. Now Roberts. Miranda again. Good block by Araujo. Yeah, using that right hand side with Tavares on, it's going to be the key today, boys. No offense to Tavares, but he's not very good, is he? Martinelli. Vlavic now. Gets passed, but it's an awful shot. Awful shot there from Dusan Vlavic. Pressure by Martin to prevent the goal there. Fucking hell. Thank you for sharing the link, Jordan. Appreciate it, man. But yeah, if you want to go sub to the tube, the link's in the description. All the streams, well, majority of the streams go up here. Uh, from here, we'll go up onto YouTube. Sutherland, I think he's onside, right? Blanchard's asking for it. Now D up. They're kind of closing down on my options here now. Miranda. Serrano. Roberts back into Serrano D up Blanchard oh good closing down trying to find a gap for the Arsenal defence is difficult right now they're quite good Miranda closes it down I want it to be bold but Miranda closing it down works as well yeah no this man's been a phenomenal right back great signing maybe signing of the I said maybe signing of the season but we got Sutherland back so sentimentally it's going to be Sutherland but in terms of performance, I think he's got to be Miranda. He stepped into that right back spot and been brilliant. I do like Serrano as well, but I'd still say Miranda ranks above him at the moment. Try to switch to Martin is like try to switch to like concrete because it just won't let me get there. It's saved by Nielsen anyway. A corner to Arsenal. I mean, it's obviously going to be short to Saka here, but kind of how are we going to stop Bakayo Saka getting in? Is my question. We're not. He's playing it to Laporte. 1 2, and Milinkovic Savage is closed down here. Now Wilson has the room. Oh no, he doesn't have the room. Hakimi's already back. Blanchard. That was for Roberts, but it could work for Miranda. Good touch. Keeps it in as well. Nah, Miranda's, Miranda's very good. Serrano. Tries one, it's straight to the but you don't know if you don't try. Yeah, Arsenal are not rising to the challenge at the moment. <laughs> they might change the second half, but first half has been all us. Sends up one chance they just had. If we can get a second before the break, that'd be phenomenal, but Laporte cuts that ball out to Blanchard. But not between West Ham and Bournemouth, we've got West Ham next. 
and I keep half an eye on that game. Martin tries to go for a tackle, doesn't work. Miranda, nah, this Miranda kid, great. I, I, I can't think enough things about him. Oh, Diop's been fouled. It's going to be yellow card when plays Stotts of Vlahovic, but... Nah, I told Miranda, what a man. Rodriguez makes the room. Oh, just the wrong side of the post. And there's the card for Dusan Vlahovic. Laporte is savage eight seasons in. <laughs> yeah. Laporte is a bit of a questionable one. It's Milinkovic Savage, I think, or is it? Yeah, it's Milinkovic Savage. Milinkovic Savage isn't too bad. I'll check the ratings after this and see where they're at. But they've got a good front three. And they've got a good goalkeeper. So, well, they've got a good goalkeeper for them. When Lafont was with me at my United career mode, he was wank, but it's a different matter entirely. Got front three of Saka, Martinelli, Vlahovic. It's not going to be bad at all. Um, sorry, did I not get the ball there? I thought I got the ball there. Martinelli can't score. It's closed down helpfully. Well, it's distracted by Miranda. But I thought I got a tackle in there, but I might be wrong. Martin hasn't really convinced me today, I'm going to be honest, yet. But we haven't conceded yet either, so uh, we'll set a lead for Alejandro Garnacho. Wilson. Blocked by Laporte and it nearly ended up in the net. Lafont killed the United career mode. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't understand how a goalkeeper could be so bad, but he was. He actually was. Blanchard, ball towards Rodriguez, wasn't really intended for him, Serrano, ball, oh yeah right, I mean, <laughs> you have to remember on one hand it's a centre back, but you got to give it a try sometimes as well, isn't it? <laughs> nearly half time at the Emirates and Lafon nearly fucked that up. But Arsenal managed to play themselves out of trouble. That, would, that could have been disastrous. I fucking commit solo in that position like an idiot. Oh no. There the guard for Arsenal. Turns inside Sutherland. The ball is into the hands of Nielsen, and we should. Be going into the break at 1-0. I'm just launching out the pitch. Just to ensure that. What is LaFont doing, man? Yeah, Billy Ball, not great there. But I'm not going to play him too much because he's been good for the whole season so far. It's been his first bad game, I reckon. Ball's come up to his best. But again, on the other side of things, it's not been that bad of a game because Arsenal haven't scored. We lead 1-0 for Duncan Wilson's beautiful volley. And if that's all it takes to win, that's fine. If we could just hold on to the 1-0, I'll take that. I'd like to get second, but Arsenal have uh, got themselves sorted a bit more. Take a look, uh, uh, take a look around the grounds. I can't speak. It's 1-0 to Wolves over Brighton at the Amex Stadium. Newcastle drawing, or not even drawing, they're leading Everton at 2-0. Um, at Goodison Park with one all being the scoreline between West Ham and Bournemouth and we've got West Ham next so if Bournemouth could beat them and get the morale down we could finish them off and then Liverpool and Burnley play at Anfield later but we're we've got the lead it's not a convincing one but it is one and that's all that matters really 59 to 41 in terms of possession five shots to three one expected goal to 0 0.7 they haven't really turned up yet but I'm expecting a bit more of a showing second half to be honest tiredness may have been playing into this a bit more uh, the uh, fatigue factor coming off the Champions League game they probably just played what help but that's fine by me I don't really care it's a good time for us personally good card by Rodriguez and he keeps the ball under pressure then does the absolute worst pass in the world to Serrano don't know how it's done it with that, such little power but it has this is where Arsenal wake up you know low key Vlahovic with team effort at Nielsen, but Arsenal get the first attack of the half. I'm not surprised if they end up getting an equaliser at some point. I hope they don't. They're great if they couldn't. 
Uh, right, Blanchard, I'm not being funny, like, but... You could do that, make sure it goes to Wilson rather than fucking them. Key, mate. Going right for Arsenal. Rob Martin, good tackle, mate. Read up the whole time, made a good tackle there. Miranda. Into Serrano. Miranda's definitely been my man of the match. I know Wilson's got the goal and everything, but Miranda's been solid. Blanchard's been left in areas here. Is he onside? I think he was, but that's an incredible save from Alvin Lafon. Lenny Yoro coming off. On comes Dallo. I think it's been Dallo at centre defensive mid. Or are they going to five back? I'm intrigued to see what happens with that change. Anyway, Blanchard, ball in. Towards Sutherland. I think that's come off Sutherland's head, unfortunately. Uh, the guard making way now as well. Interesting change that for Xavi Simmons. I'm pretty sure Simmons scored against me last time we played Arsenal, so it's not the stupidest change, but uh, the guard coming off. An interesting one. I probably won't make too many changes because we've got a two-week international break after this, but maybe make a couple if we're in a comfortable spot, but I don't know if we'll ever be in a comfortable spot in this game. Serrano. Also Rodriguez, but that works too. Ah, uh, close down. Nearly 2-0. If I could just get that trigger pulled there on that shot. Yeah, Tavares is awful. The fact that they're starting Tavares eight seasons in. I wonder they came second last year. Never going to win the league with Tavares at right back. Or whatever, left back. The other one. Fuck, I think Roberts was offside anyway. But, intercepted. And Arsenal could go here. Vlahovic. Great close down by Bull. Martin was doing the hassling there and Bull was doing the tackling. I'll just give it straight to Saka. Obviously that wasn't the intention, but it's a great save from Nielsen. I mean, I don't know how that pass has gone there. That was awful. I think it was Bull who passed it straight to Saka, but obviously it wasn't the intention. <laughs> Sutherland. Oh, you fucking... You keep me getting in the way. Blavich versus Bull. Bull's going to knock it back to Nielsen. Not bad. I think, I think it's going to be a matter holding on, because I don't think we can get this second. But I don't want Arsenal to score, you get what I mean? Oh, Miranda. Take it around Martinelli twice. Brad has got Martinelli on toast, man. Ah, oh, I, I pressed the wrong button. There's nothing other than I pressed the wrong button there. I was going to start blaming somebody, but I realised I pressed the Y button. <laughs> to the A button. Good tackle by Sutherland. Got past ball. Oh, I need to touch my eye. Hold on. I need to touch my eye. My eye's been sore recently. I had to get my eyes tested. I'm going to make some changes here as well, but itchy eye is not fun. I make a change anyway, I should say. Not some changes. Um, Chavez from Martin, I think. Martin's not been bad, but Chavez gives a bit more stability, you know. And the Maresca in for Serrano, I think, as well. I thought Serrano might be a bit better today. I'll say that and he'll score as he gets subbed off. Or before he gets subbed off. Good block by Martin. The foul. Might not score a second, but they can play until New Year's and not score. Yeah, they've been struggling, but Olmo, I'm pretty sure, scored past me last time as well. So I'm concerned they're bringing on Danny Olmo. Double change for us, though. How's that for... Sorry, what? Sorry, no, sorry, am I missing something here? Did I not get fouled? No? I, I could have sworn I got fouled, right? Did I do something to their player? Let's... Ah, Sutherland did catch him. Yeah, fair enough. But I thought the foul was being brought back for the thing on me. Right, it's fine. It's fine. Just had to double check. Oh, it's great play. 
But Xavi Simmons has put that way off target. How did you think I was followed then? Because fucking Milinkovic Savage ran through me. I didn't realise I'd done something, to be honest. Sometimes I press B and it takes a while to actually do the contact. Like a lunge in and it, it'll take like two seconds before it's a foul. And I forgot about that point. Oh, Wilson's been snapped in half. As long as he doesn't get injured again. 3 0 to Newcastle over Everton. Everton are getting destroyed. Nicholas Nielsen, you absolute god of a man. What a save. Javi Simmons thought he'd equalised there for Arsenal. Simmons making T up look like how that, uh, that effort. I nearly read that wrong. I thought it said, I thought it said outfit. Fucking hell. I, I really do minimise tested. But there's no appointments until New Year, which is annoying. Bull, get it away. Diop counter perhaps now with Malik Diop. Oh, he's been snapped in half. That's okay. It's cut to Bull. Oh, I might as well ride this wave of momentum from Arsenal and hope we can cut our side with the win. Rask could try to find it through. Didn't work. Bull heads it to Diop. So I've learned. Fuck's sake, they're good, they're good at defending, even if they can't attack. <laughs> oh, bollocks. Tried to position Bull and it just, I knew it wasn't going to work how I positioned him, but Simmons is really damn trying. Simmons went, a lot, went out a lot further than I expected there. Nielsen's keeping us in this. Maybe it was Bull that should have come off rather than Martin, because Martin's actually wasn't too bad. Saka gets pickpocketed by Rodriguez. I just want to press clear. I just want to clear it. Just for now, just give me a minute. Min give me a minute to think. Wilson gets it away. Sutherland, good tackle. We'll just try to run down the clock, I think, at this point. I knew where he was going to go, but I couldn't do anything about it, unfortunately. Oh! Uh, sorry, no. I'm sorry, I'm not playing this video game. I'm, I'm not playing it. There's no point. I thought they also grabbed it. Why? Why? Why is this game the way that it is? Why does this game want to make everyone that plays upset? Like, what's the point? What's the genuine point? It's under... Uh, I mean... I don't know what to tell you about that. I don't. I don't really know what to say. I've dove in for it. It's been blocked by Nielsen. It's kind of squished between Vlahovic and Nielsen. He has it under his body, and somehow it squeezes. Somehow it squeezes out. Hold on. Right. Cool. Then Vlahovic just has an empty net to. Whatever. Well, that's how we lose the three points. I we shouldn't lose the three points at all either. I don't know what to say. I don't. What can I say? There's nothing I can do about that. That is just the video game being shit. Can't be arsed. <sighs> now we've got to fight for a winner. If they, just so you know, if they go on and win this, that's the end of the episode. I'm not playing anymore. Genuinely, I'm not. I want to shoot Maresca, man. He's fucking awful at shooting. Rodriguez, please. Of course, it doesn't rebound to me. That one doesn't rebound to me, but my one rebounds to them. You're fucking damn right. That is justice. That is fucking justice. 
Carlos Rodriguez gets us justice. It's going to be a limbs episode today, guys. We can't fucking do anything else. That is deserved. There is absolutely no way that Arsenal should have a goal today. But the Peruvian prince, the captain, the number nine, at the death, gets us a winner. Fucking hell. We didn't deserve to be losing that at all, or drawing that even. We, had, we deserve the three points all day, and we're going to get them now. Thank God. So a couple of minutes of added time to go through, but we deserve this. And if they fucking score again, I might lose my shit, genuinely. I'll get one more chance out of it. Simmons took too long to play it through. That's a hard-fought three points, but not in the way that the uh, the uh, Norwich one was. Norwich were actually decent. Arsenal came through the second half a bit more when they made the changes. But for most of that, they were shit. And then they got the stupidest, the world's stupidest fucking equaliser. But thank God for that. Carlos Rodriguez, lay on. Getting us the three points. I'd have been so so upset. I'd have been so upset if we dropped points there. I know Arsenal came back into it as they brought on Simmons and as they brought on Olmo, but if they ended with a point there, I would have been so upset. I mean, they'd have more chances overall, apparently, and better. Ex I mean, maybe I shouldn't be so upset, but I just feel like it's more not that Arsenal came back into it. It was the goal they scored and the way they scored it. I think it's more what I'm annoyed at. But anyway, 57 to 43 in terms of possession for us. 11 shots to 9 for Arsenal. 3.1 is about to go, so 2.1 as well. That fucking shit goal. Just awful. Man of the match goes to Roberts. He seems to be cooking right now. No point taking off the stove, is there? Assist and an 8.1. Miranda once again. Fantastic performance off that side. Kept Martinelli silent. Uh, Nielsen as well. Deserved a clean sheet today. And that's really stupid. Um, it's not a clean sheet, though, unfortunately, but it should be. It damn well should be. Nine shots, eight saves, one conceded. Uh, unfortunately, from Nicholas Nielsen. Deserved better than that. Rodriguez with a goal and a 7.7. .7. Wilson with the early goal as well, 7.5. But thank God Rodriguez got that late fucking winner. Or I would have screamed. <laughs> Everyone else doing all right. Bull, probably the better of the two centre backs still today, but still looked a bit off colour, in my opinion. Um, which means Ibrahim probably gets a run in for the game against West Ham, which he was going to get anyway. Uh, Bladchart doing all right. Didn't find the goal that I thought he would get today, but uh, it's a okay. Everyone else doing ugh, good enough, I suppose. It wasn't really a great showing from either side ultimately, but it was the yeah, it was the way that they scored the goal rather than the fact that they got back into the game. The other side's coming from Maresca to set up the Rodriguez winner. 6.3, Fernando Maresca. I just want to check this goal out again. Because uh, I'm really confused. How does it How does it do that? Like, it really doesn't want me... Like, you say... Like, people watch these career modes and say, you can see too many goals. Yeah, I do, but look at the goals I'm conceding. And you can fucking see why I can see so many bloody goals. Nielsen's put a heroic performance in there to get to that. And it bounces off Vlavic's leg. Ricochets under Nielsen. Squeezes out. I wonder if did Vlahovic get a foot to it to put it out from under Nielsen? Was that what happened there? The ball has gone into the floor. I think Vlahovic's foot goes through Nielsen's arm. There's there's so much wrong with this. It does eventually ricochet out for the equaliser, but my god. That might be one of the worst goals I've ever conceded in this game, but thank god for this, man. We'll watch the limbs, of course. Diop lodged it to Roberts. Maresca gets it into the path of Rodriguez. And thank god we've got a striker who can score whenever we need it, because, again, if I drop points there, we won't be doing, an episode, won't be, uh, doing more of the episode today. I'm going to be calling it a day, and understandably so. That's such a stupid goal to concede. 
And especially when there's nothing I can do about it, that's what makes it even more annoying, the fact that I can't prevent it. I maybe could have got a ball back across, but I don't think it would have mattered, really. I thought Keeper had it with no issue. Anyway, Arsenal ratings, I suppose, as well. Better check them. I always forget to do that. But here we go. Man of the match with them was a key mate. Fair enough. I couldn't get through on that left-hand side. And they did go to a five-back in the end. So they put Dallow at centre-back. They must have done. But anyway... It's, yeah, Hakimi was their best player. Couldn't get Wilson released. Even if I brought Bishop, he wouldn't have got released on that side either. Hakimi was solid. Martinelli, 7.6. Tried to create something. Uh, Bakayo Saka as well, doing all right. Vlahovic with the goal, 7.2. Don't know if he quite deserved the goal, but he got one. Laporte, an 86. I mean, look at service, an 84 in terms of overall. Danny Olmo, off the bench with assist, a 6.9. Lafont, five shots, three saves, two conceded. Not phenomenal from the Frenchman, but not awful either. I mean, based on stats, Arsenal probably deserved something out of the game. But based on fairness, I'm glad we fucking won it. They did put Dallow at centre-back. They put him in the middle centre-back as well. Interesting. Interesting choice there. And by interesting, I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> but uh, anyway, we get the win. Deservedly so. Based off of the bullshit that the game tried to throw at us. So, 2-1 win. Not quite the 4-1 you predicted there, uh, Jordan. Wolves won again, for fuck's sake. I'm starting to feel like it's going to be a two-horse race, you know. Happy we're one of the horses in it, to be honest. Oh, Carlos Rodriguez, you lovely, lovely man. The boys left it late, didn't they? Well, let's be real. Um, we weren't trying to leave it late, we were just trying to hold on, and the game was like, you know what, Arsenal can have one for absolutely no reason. Ultimately, we did win, though, so it's whatever, I guess. I would like the uh, clean sheet, but the game didn't want us to get it. <laughs> We did well otherwise. Miranda as well, putting in a shift as always. Definitely my favourite favorite defender, I would say, at the moment. I'm saying it on my Sutherland, which is mad. Sutherland's made his return. He's not... I mean, I didn't expect him to do anything outrageous, like score 20 goals from left-back or anything, but I expect him to do a little bit more than what he is doing. Anyway, two-week break now from international duty, so we'll sim all the way through. Sutherland development schedule. He must have hit his... Oh, no. No, no, no. We're going to look at the Sutherland development schedule first. But if that injury is to someone... Oh, you can see who it's to. Ike Martin. Three weeks sprain ankle. It could have been worse. All right. I didn't want to look at it first. Just in case it was Duncan Wilson on international duty. Sutherland now one of the best in the world. Hit his 90 potential. One of the world's best. Look at that, man. I know we were just talking about how he's not done enough. But maybe he will do a bit more. I'm hoping he'll do a bit more. But look at that. From our academy all the way to the top. What a man. What a man. I love how some of these are NA because they just take too bloody long. <laughs> but look at that. Sutherland, one of the world's best. Ike Martin, three week injury. It's nothing too bad on the face of it. But the problem is we're coming into December. That's when most of the games happen. But... Um, yeah, Ike Martin, sprained ankle injury while on international duty with Germany, which is kind of annoying because he actually did quite well against Arsenal, but we've got plenty of uh, we've got plenty of opportunities for the other defenders now. Ibrahim can get a couple more appearances. Uh, Chavez can come in a bit more as well. Bull can continue to be in. Not too shabby, really. So take a look at the table. Now, Wolves just keep running away with it, and every other team around us keeps winning as well. In fact, actually, I think Chelsea dropped points. It's just very artist. Fucking hell, I would love to be in that Spurs and Luton game, man. Chelsea lost 3 1 to Forest at the Bridge. Um, Leicester won. Man City and Man United drew, which slows them both down, which is fine by me. Newcastle won. Wolves won again, of course. Bournemouth beat West Ham. West Ham looked like it could go down, and Liverpool drew again. Liverpool is struggling, you know. 
Still in 14th. My Knight's still in 16th. But that relegation battle is looking tasty. Brentford, West Ham and Luton still remaining in the bottom three. Right. Two week break, boys. Let's batter the fuck out of West Ham without being too vile about it. Let's just destroy them. Let's just end them before they've even started. Kind of thing. Shabalala's not 286 on loan at Bournemouth. How's he doing? It's only three goals. And I don't think he's getting as many appearances as he was either, but... He might still be a talent. I just I don't know how to use him here. Kind of thing. But anyway, it's all Gucci. Till end of the season, we'd have to figure it out. So, we'll save this over so I don't lose any progress off the Arsenal win that we deserve to have with a clean sheet, but who's counting, you know? Take a look then, first of all, at the news before we go on this one. Rodriguez's dramatic late goal seals Hartlepool win. Rodriguez snatched a win for his team against Arsenal with dramatic late goal put Hartlepool United 2-1 up. You're damn right. It shouldn't have even been 2-1, but because we had to go for it, we went for it. We're always good for a late winner, we are. Denmark destroyed the traditional rivals, 4-0. I don't know who they are, but fair enough. And Norway beat Finland 2-1. Malo Gusto injured for five months for Barcelona, if anyone's interested. He's broken his tailbone. And um, Martin is going to miss four weeks with a sprained ankle, but it shouldn't be too bad. It's not as bad as a broken tailbone, so it's not the end of the world. Martinez confirmed he won't be available for Hartlepool for around four weeks as he recovers from his recent ankle injury. The problem with these international duties, sometimes you'll get bloody uh, injuries. That is a mad game, by the way. 5-3. Wish I'd been able to watch that game. Fucking hell. Luton Town were beaten 5-3 by a powerful Spurs side. Sometimes you don't get what you deserve from a game, said the Luton Town manager, but we'll take the result on the chin and bounce back. To be fair, they're bottom of the league and they've put three past Spurs. That's not a bad result, but I've also conceded five. So, can't go look at it from that front as well. But that's the update on the table. Um, Wolves still continue to win, but we're around. We're around that area and we're going to go in against West Ham and I'm going to risk something here again, which I probably shouldn't because I said he wasn't ready for the Premier League, but I'm doing it because fuck it. Oh, after bloody... Do this. I've got to do it all the way from over here because this game likes to be annoying. Even when you do it on there, I see you still have an unavailable player. It's so fucking stupid. Right. This could be risky, but no risk, no reward, I guess. Abraham's going to come in as well, which might make his defence very easy to score against, but maybe he'll be good. I mean, he probably will be good. I, I um, appreciate him being decent. Miranda can rest. Because we've got we've got Liverpool next. I know they're in 14th, but they'll still put up a fight. And we've got Manchester City. Following that. Barlow comes in. Wilson's up to an 84. So hasn't hit his potential. You'd love to see it. Um, Where is the man that asked for the game? Bishop, there he is. Comes in for Wilson. And... You know what, Carpenter, you can have a try, but I wasn't really enticed with you last time. And Carlson getting a little bit upset as well. I thought we'll know how to shit. I will give Miranda a rest. That's not Miranda. I click Sutherland. Give Miranda a rest. I'll put Carlson in. On the bench. He actually did quite well against um, our first opponents today, who I can't remember who they were. Norwich. Anyway, this is risky business, but I'm hoping we can do enough up front that at the back we don't have to worry too much. Higgins in between the sticks, Moffat and Flores as the full backs, Bull and Ibrahim as the centre backs, the up CDM slash centre mid, Serrano centre mid slash Cam, um, Bishop off the left, Barlow off the right, Carpenter and Rodriguez up top, Rodriguez captaining the side. In fact, I think I'm actually going to go with Serrano or um, Hobbs to start and then bring on Serrano in case we need him. Which is risky, but we'll go for it anyway. And that is the rest of the team. Bishop left, Barlow right, Carpenter Rodriguez up top, like we said. Um, of course, the Peruvian Prince saving us from defeat against Arsenal. It's an interesting side from West Ham, and I'm not saying that because of the players. I'm saying that because of some of where the players are. 
They've got Cassidy, who I'm pretty sure is a centre mid. He's at left back. I think that's Moises Kayasado on the left wing. Um, I don't know how West Ham are going to end up, but I think they probably get relegated this season. No concurrent matches. So for the third game of today is Victoria Park hosting it with Hartlepool playing against West Ham. It's the early kickoff as well. So why there's no concurrent matches. I want to be confident, but we do have Higgins in the net. What's the bench looking like? Yeah, I, thought, I think we could probably beat these, but I think we'll probably concede a few because we've got Higgins in between the six. Easy 4-1 win. He's just going to say 4-1 for every game. <laughs> but though we should be winning these with no problem. But again, Norwich puts to the test. So it's not necessarily a given that we'll win. Third game that we've kicked off first. I like it. I like that they're giving us a kick off first because they just know we're better. Didn't really plan on starting Bishop for this one, but he asked for the game and I'm um, not one if not nice. Unless it's a player that's like 60 rated and he asks for the game and then I'm just not going to do it. I'm nice, but I'm not stupid. Moffat and Bishop linking well together there. Carpenter. Oh, decent effort, Pavlovsky. I thought Rodriguez might have got in the way, so I took a bit longer there to take it on. Carpenter's someone who needs to get back into his form that he was in last year. He struggled a bit so far this year, but that's fine. Everyone else seems to be doing well. Billy Bull can't win the header. Hobbs can't win it either. Oh, no. We can't for West Ham. Prince Ibrahim tries to get across. Oh, fuck off. Thank God. Thank God. We managed to push him out to the side. God forbid I couldn't tackle him there, but we pushed him out to the side. That could have gone rogue. D up. Oh, Christ. Rebounded. Flores. That could have gone so wrong there. But thankfully, managed to close down that space for him to run into. Bishop. Carpenter's on. Oh, sorry. I pressed the A button. I'm not being silly, but I've pressed the A button. Why has that gone so fast? There's Carlos Rodriguez, six goals in 12 appearances, not too shabby. I don't know if I really want a bit more. I would say maybe a tiny bit more from Rodriguez would be nice, but we have scored quite a lot this season, so I can't really complain too much. And Blanchard have been decent. A big winner against Arsenal might change the course of our season, so at the moment I'm not really too concerned. Jackson Barlow. Rodriguez, through the path to Carpenter. Right, now we need to have a conversation, Luca, mate, because you're meant to potentially be special. And you couldn't score in a brothel at the moment, mate, quite honestly. That should be 1-0, 100%. How's that not found the bottom corner? Oh, mate. He's special, all right. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand what's happened to him. So good last year. Maybe he'll find that goal, but I just I don't know if it'll be today. Try pressing for the ball, but it's not worked yet. 
Whether it will or not, it's a different matter. Oh, noise that hasn't worked yet. Also, it seems to be the relegation sides that seem to turn up against me as well, so I'm not going to be surprised too much. That happens again. Good block by Ibrahim. Rebound. Good save by Higgins. Of course, it rebounds to them. Why would it, why would it go to my player when I've won it, you know? Don't be silly. Long ball all the way to Barlow. Flores is going to try and make the run through here. Around Cassidy. I'm going to have to hold it up. Ball over to Barlow. Smart move there. Ball inside. Hobbs. Carpenter. Ah, oh, you fucking good tackler. Never so mad, but also for a compliment. But like, I just wanted to not to Bishop, and it probably would have been 1 0. Good tackle Moffat to win it back. Ball inside, perhaps. Carpenter. It's caught by Francis. Frances. Ball wins it back, though. Hobbs. Yep, Carpenter. Oh my God, this guy in the defence. He's like a tank. I don't know which one it is. Good interception by Flores. Ibrahim spotting Bishop. Carpenter. Try to fit it for it, Rodriguez. Man, it's fucking difficult getting through this defence, you know. Or maybe I'm just bad. Ibrahim. Good tackle, at least a slow play down, but I don't know why he's now putting Miles up position. Go on, Billy. Go on, Billy. Yeah, go on. Tell him. Carpenter, try to find Barlow. Ball inside to Hobbs. I was going to run through and knock it off to Rodriguez. I can't get through these defenders at the moment. Tackle by Bull. At least my defence are doing all right. I can't find a goal against West Ham, which is concerning because they're in 19th. Rodriguez off the week for off balance. Straight at Pavlovsky. Hobbs, Carpenter, Marlow just trying to find space to move into, but either my players just don't move into the correct space or they're just closing it down. That's a great section by Malik Diop, by the way. Running in. Uh, okay, didn't quite get to the target. Lovely. Yep, tries to get across. Doesn't quite manage it. They're going to put us over the top, aren't they? Well, they're not. They would have done. Oh, bollocks. Yeah, you just knew that was going to happen. You just knew that was going to happen. I hate this video game, by the way, just for reference. I've had everything and they just go and counter me. Sounds about right. If you like clean sheets and good defending, you come to the wrong place. I don't understand why my defence have gone like that, though. Like, split like that. I don't get it. Simeone makes it 1-0 West Ham against the run of play completely. But there's no surprise there. If we can't finish our dinner, they'll finish theirs and make us pay, really. I'm just hoping this is going to be another 2-1 at this rate. It seems like it's going to be a day of 2-1s. I'm just hoping we can actually do that and not lose to West Ham out of all the teams. Out of all the teams, I expect us to beat these easiest. Based on league positioning anyway. But that doesn't mean fuck all in this game, apparently. Oh, Carpenter, if you pass it when I pressed A, rather than waiting a second, then passing it. I fucking got there. You can fuck off. Oh, this game. This game is uh, a rogue. A rogue agent. I thought I was about to give a penalty there. I'm about to fucking lose my mind. Why can't we beat West Ham? It was risky putting Higgins in, but there's no stopping the goal that they scored. It was just the more I needed to stop that before Simeone started running through. And then we just can't finish up the other end for some reason. But the good thing is, based off of today's episode, we'll win this 2-1. So, like, I'm not worried too much. It's just when it gets to 90 minutes and we're still 1-0 down. That's where I'd be worried. Why have you shot down your right? You fucking... Rodriguez, I love you, man. You're my favourite striker. But why have you shot that on your right? What on what earth? That needs to be shot on your right foot. Go on, Barlow. 
Ah, oh, it's gonna be one of those days where the keeper is on his shit. I'm lucky from Barlow. Ball in. Towards ball! Ah, oh, fuck off with that bounce, man. It was just too heavy on the old bounce. It left the keeper uh, wondering, but it's just bounced over the bar. I, I, it's going to be one of these games, isn't it, where I lose for no reason. Ball cleared all the way up the pitch. Ibrahim could get there. Ibrahim does get there. Might get another chance out of this half yet, but I doubt it will go in. Rodriguez launches to Bishop. Back in. Rodriguez is blocked. That's the one you take on your left. The one that he's going to block when you take on your left foot. Oh, man. Well, every game so far, a half time we've led 1 0, but in this one, against the team that I expect to beat, we're losing 1 0. You know what? Fair enough, FIFA. Have your fun. I can't wait till I don't have to play this game anymore. I get to play EAFC 24, which is way worse. I'm so excited, personally. Bugger in hell. Well, we're down a goal. I'm not entirely sure how. All these games will happen later, so I don't know why they're coming up on my list. Wolves play Chelsea, though. That's a big one, actually. If Wolves can drop points, and we can actually win against West Ham like we should be. Well, I guess we'll see what happens there. But Burnley play Man City at Turf Moor. Man United play Luton at Old Trafford. Newcastle play Brighton at St. James's Park. Wolves play Chelsea at Molyneux. Nottingham Forest play Brentford at the City Ground. Leicester play Southampton at King Power. I've got hiccups. And uh, Arsenal play Norwich at the Emirates. So there we go. There's the rest of your games. But we're down a goal to nil, despite these being the stats. So that figure them out for me, please. I mean, maybe the shot accuracy is not incredible, but... I don't think we should be losing 1 0 personally. 60 to 40 in terms of possession, 8 shots to 3. 1.8 expected to go 0 0.9, and yet they have the goal. Granted, it was a good goal, don't get me wrong. I'm not mad about the goal he scored, it was a good goal. But why haven't we scored? I'm mad at my attackers for being little cunts. I want Carpenter to get good, please, again. Obviously, we've got Blanchard on the bench, and it seems like he'll be brought on sooner rather than later. We've also got Wilson. We need something as well. Got past Arsenal, didn't they? Quite a nice goal. I thought actually, I mean, the only reason I've subbed him off for Bishop is because Bishop asked for the game. It would have been Wilson today otherwise. Good tackle, Moffat. Quick attack, quick attack. It was awful, to be honest, for me for Rodriguez. I should have just gone on and taken his right foot. Don't know why I took the turn and then shot it from there. Like, I've, I've actually not even shot it on target. The only reason it's a corner is because the defender is in the wrong place. Fucking hell, it's going way off. You know what, we'll take it. Going from FIFA 23 to EAC 24 is like going from hepatitis to gonorrhea. Yeah, you can put the nail on the head there. FIFA 23 is better, don't get me wrong, but... It's not much better. Bishop to ball! Oh my god, I can't be bothered! It's going to really be one of these days. Caicedo coming off for Correa, and it wasn't Moises Caicedo, so that makes a bit more sense why he's on the left. Correa is a right back, so maybe they're going for a five back as well. Bishop to Bull again. Oh my actual days. Rodriguez! Oh, he was on! I thought he was off! What a fucking thumper! The number nine! I didn't even pick it. I didn't press to do a celebration. He's just picked it as himself. Barlow inside to Carpenter. Rodriguez turns his man and thumps it away. I didn't think he was onside. And even if he isn't, I'm not going to question it. That's a phenomenal finish. Ball's about nine. He almost goes for corners. Yeah, if every fucking header Bull got on target and actually gone in, he might genuinely be the top scorer of this club. That's an exaggeration, obviously, because Rodriguez has probably scored around 100, maybe 200 goals at this point. He's been here for eight seasons. But, like, you get what I mean. He would have scored a lot more. We'd have won a lot more games as well. We'd have won the Premier League by now. Good play. Shim is offside. Took a save from Higgins as well. 
celebration was cringe, can't lie. <laughs> I put my controller down, and it was him who picked it. I was getting a drink. <laughs> Rodriguez just decided he was going to dance with his mates for an equaliser against the 19th place side. I maybe should have picked the celebration. At least in gritty, I suppose. Moffat down the left now, Bishop. Carpenter's running through. Oh, right. I'm not being silly, Bishop, and I do like you as a player, but I can't let you get away with that. You First of all, let's analyse this quickly. You're right-footed. You've got the ball here. Turn your man. You're right-footed. First of all, you've done it with your left foot. Second of all, you've sliced it to fucking hell. Right. Well, he's coming off. I'm going to keep Carpenter for a little bit longer because he actually did set up Rodriguez's goal. But... Um, if it gets to the point where I desperately need a winner, Blanchard's making his way on. Barlow. Inside. Outside. Oh, he's doing a little tricky run, but got caught. I do quite like Barlow, but I I don't know how I use him, really. He's more of a crossing winger, which is... He's on the wrong side for that. Good header. Ibrahim. No, Hobbs. It wasn't Ibrahim in the mid-header, by the way, but he had the ball when I said it, so... Rodriguez. Oh, what on earth fucking touch is that? Because I want to just fucking run straight to the defender, don't I? For reference, I don't. Now West Ham moving forward. I'm actually scared that we don't get three points here. You know? That's offside. I brought Bull forward. How's that not offside? Oh, whatever. So I continue. Carpenter. Carpenter's coming off as well. <laughs> There's only so much I can allow. We've not even made the changes yet. Carlson, I would have liked to have had you on today, fella, but like, it's been a lot more of a struggle than I expected. Good save by Higgins. That's from Eagle against the relegation side. Yeah, we, we start dancing. The boy is coming on now, Wilson and Blanchard. Hopefully can find us a winner. I don't understand why we're struggling against West Ham. I get it against Arsenal, but West Ham have actually been better than Arsenal. That's not even a joke. They generally have. Flores, good tackle. Counter, perhaps. Not with passing like that. Good read, Ibrahim. Told you still a good defender. Barlow. Rodriguez. Hobbs. I don't really want to be countering with Hobbs, respectfully. Wilson's out to Moffat. Now Wilson turning his man. Diop. Ah, oh, tried to play it off. Why am I defense in so much disarray here? Good pass. Well, I'd say it was a good exception, not a good pass. It was an awful pass, but good exception by Diop. Blanchard, Rodriguez, please. I genuinely don't understand. Why do these keepers suddenly turn into Prime Lawyer? Right when I don't need them to. Chauna coming off. I didn't see who came on. It looks like... That, that looks like Hugo Hansen. It's because it is Hugo Hansen. Ball in. Oh, wait. Blanchard's went to the corners. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. I forgot he was on. Ball. Hobbs. Oh, I think he's been blocked by my own player. I'm not going to lie. If Hugo Hans scores the winner past us, fair play, mate. But also, I'll be very annoyed. Because Hugo Hans the former top player. Never really got a break in here because he just got so many wingers. But definitely a good player. Diop giving an exception. Oh, my fucking days. I just, I can't, apparently. And it is Hugo Hans who scored. You, you just know. You know that this game is just going to hear what I'm saying. And it's like, yeah, you know what, we'll do that. That's a good plan. It's a great plan, that. Yeah, fantastic plan. I hate this game. I knew it was going to be our former player that did it as well. You, you fucking knew it was going to happen. Higgins is really not ready for the Premier League. That's what I've learned. And I don't think he's going to get any more Premier League games this season. He's been decent today, but that's got to be saved.
But you, you just knew that was going to happen. As soon as you saw our former player come onto the pitch, you knew he was going to get the winner. I mean, it's still 12 minutes, but <laughs> I, I just you could just smell it. It's his first match of the season, and he scored past us. Of course he has. First, uh, it's a simple pass to Rodriguez. How the fuck does that go past? I don't understand this video game. Good exception, Flores. Come on. We can't lose to... Out of all the teams we've played today, we can't lose to fucking West Ham, surely. No offense to West Ham. I don't mind them in real life, but, like, in-game, they've been... That's offside by a country mine. <sighs> game could make it up. Cassidy. Oh, it's a different Cassidy as well. That's why it wasn't... That's why he's a left-back. A Dingra coming on. Well, sometimes this game will just shaft you in the ass and you've got to smile and say thank you. Yeah, he is prime fucking, uh, prime fucking lawyer. I'm not brought on Serrano. I should have brought on Serrano early, but at the same time, I'm resting him. Liverpool, I suppose. I guess that's the excuse I'm using now anyway, because I meant to bring him on way earlier. Completely forgot. For Ibrahim. Diop! Oh, fuck off, cunt! Ball! Oh, fuck this game. Fuck this game entirely. I've had enough. Called it a night, boys. Called it a night. It's only, what, half three? Not even half three. It's just turned three o'clock. Fuck this, man. What the fuck? And Diop hits the post. That's probably the best we're getting. Our undefeated streak. He's going, to lose, uh, he's going to come to an end against West Ham. Unless we find an equaliser soon. I'm, p I'm pressing A to do a simple pass. Stop launching it. Oh, fuck this, man. Great save, Higgins. Moffat gets it away. We're still in it. The fact that we're still in it against the relegation side is quite concerning, but we are. I've aimed that for fucking Barlow. This game can fuck itself. I'm going to... Oh, you know what? It's fine. I've had some stupid losses throughout the series. This is just one of them. Good save by Higgins. He's trying to keep us in it desperately. Passing's... Dis it's not... Right, let's be real. It's not my passing, all right? I know what I want to do with it. The game just doesn't want to agree. I'm aiming it straight at Rodriguez. A button pass. Not a lot of power on it. It just goes past him every time for some reason. You can blame me all you like, but reality, we know what the fucking factor is it's this kid that's come on from our club that we sold to them and he's gone and scored the winner and the game's like they can't have anything though Blanchard I don't I sorry I don't know where they magic these fucking touches from but it's not a touch I'm doing go on ball right counter please boys please we can't lose to West Ham Barlow just not want to bother mate fair enough cool The keeper's on smoke. The keeper's on smoke. What can I say? Fair play. Fair play. Uh, uh, Pavlovsky, you're incredible. I can't even speak. I'm getting so annoyed. This keeper is the best in the world. We're signing them next year, boys. Don't care. Who's coming in? Pavlovsky. You probably let in seven for me, but. Barlo. Why is he taking the corner? Oh, no. Ibrahim! Oh, fuck it all! Fuck off. It's just my fucking luck that we beat every team or get a point against every team. And then the team we lose to is in fucking 19th. I can't be bothered. I can't be arsed. Fuck off. You have to take another touch or two there. You shot too soon. I don't think it would have mattered, mate. Their goalkeeper would have read that any old way. It was scripted for my fucking former player to beat me. I don't care. Even if I'd gone on the line, I would have missed that. Oh, uh, whatever. Fuck this shit game sometimes, honestly. Former player comes back to haunt us. I mean, it's got a, we've got a title, I suppose. Oh, 
Uh, fuck off. Well, at least we didn't win 2 1. We lost 2 1 instead. Varying it up a bit. I can't believe it. I cannot. The track accuracy is not great. I get that. But. <laughs> we should have won that. But it's whatever. 58 to 42 in terms of possession. 19 shots to 7. 3.7 expected goals to 2.7. It's great, really, when you think about it. I wouldn't hit the post with D up. I knew that I didn't go in. It's not going to happen for us. Bollocks is what it is. Absolute bollocks. Man of the match goes to Billy Bull. It gets an 8.1. Another good performance from him. I just wish, wish the rest of the team would do something. Moffat and Barlow, very active. Eight ratings. Nothing more from them, though, unfortunately. Um, Rodriguez getting the goal and a 7.8. Higgins with 7.2. He six shots on his target, four saves to conceded. Still needs a bit more experience, in my opinion. Bishop was alright. Everyone else was kind of ass. Um, Wilson came on, didn't really do much, but Bishop didn't really do much when he was on either. The assist from Carpenter, he got 6.3. He was quite shit otherwise. And the fact that I brought up Blanchard and he can score either is not really great, but man of the match for them. And the whole game goes to Simeone, who got a goal and an assist at 8.5. Decent ratings from the defence as well. Pavlovsky. Nine shots as goal, eight saves, one conceded. I wish my keeper would do that, you know? I suppose it was Higgins. Although Higgins, isn't Higgins the same rating as Pavlovsky? You know, I don't read into it too much, I suppose. Arroyo did well. Hansen coming off the bench to win the game. A goal in a 7.2. The assist coming from Colo Cholo with a 6.9. It's whatever, isn't it? It had to end at some point in the unbeaten run, but not against fucking West Ham. I don't think it, again. I don't think it would have mattered if I'd taken two touches and steadied myself for three days for that chance at the end because it just wouldn't have gone in. Admittedly, I probably took it from too far out, yeah. But I think if I, even if I go closer, I don't think it's going to matter. I was on the edge of the box. It's not like I was far out. He just pulled off an incredible save. It's one last time in the game. It is what it is. Of course, Hansen, our former player, scores a winner for them. The end of a long unbeaten run. Chelsea, I beg you, do something. I think they'll probably go on points with us if they do win, but it's better than having Wolves go six clear. I'm never going to get an episode again where I win all five, am I? I mean, it couldn't last forever, but I wasn't waiting for it to end. But we're going to go with a positive answer, I suppose. To, to fucking West Ham. I just can't do it against bloody relegated sides. Or relegation teams. I, it's... Whatever. There's a lot I could have changed about that game, personally, from my attack. But, like, at the same time, their keeper was mad. And they brought in our former player, so we already lost that. Noth none of these make sense. Because West Ham weren't better than us in the day. We had plenty of the ball, and our defending was fine. But I guess I'll go with that, because it's the most truthful. It does bring the morale down a little bit. But I thought the defending was all right. Once you went behind, you never looked able to get back into the game. We fucking equalised, I love you know. But we did take our chances, to be fair. That is a correct statement. Well, it's the way she goes. You win some, you lose some. I just wish we wouldn't lose the easy ones. I'm presuming Wolves won, but I'm not looking at the table till we get to Liverpool. I refuse. I don't care. Blanchard developed schedule. He's hit his potential now of 91. And with the way he's going, I'm assuming I'll probably only get higher. He might even overtake Rodriguez at this rate. Rodriguez still has a bit of potential to grow. Mobile striker. Try to get a bit more... Kind of strength up, stamina up. Probably could work on his heading as well, but I just, I don't know how long. That would, that would take a lot longer, I think. I don't know if you can actually work on his heading. But you can if you put him on target player. Oh, in nine weeks. Actually, we'll do that instead then. And then Blanchard, as you can see, he's hit his potential. But it's a very good potential. And I think he'll only get better as well because of the fact that he's had a good season. His potential might get higher. 6-3 so far. We'll usually check stats halfway for an episode, but not, not too bad. 
Thomas Bishop was happy to get the game while he was in form. Um, first of all, he played like shit. And second of all, we lost. With that third now, Wolves, of course, did win. Spurs won their game as well. well. Chelsea lost, which I guess is good. But the bad thing is was that Wolves beat them. What were the fucking scores on the doors then? We lost, obviously. Leicester won. Forest won. City drew again. Man United beat Luton just about. Fucking hell. Wolves, Newcastle and Arsenal all winning as well. Liverpool and Spurs winning too. Or well, Liverpool drawing, Spurs winning. Ah, uh, man. It's not looking good, Brev. I just wish I was fucking able to win games when I should be able to. <laughs> but either, either I'll just take awful opportunities on. I won't be able to finish my dinner. Or their keeper just turns into fucking Yashin. Prime Yashin. I don't think we've conceded the most, have we? No, Bournemouth have conceded 25 and they're in 10th. Luton have conceded 34. I don't... I don't want to jinx this. But I don't think there's any worry that we're going to be conceding the most goals this season. But again, I don't want to jinx it. Because that could change. <laughs> anyway... Up next, it's a visit to Anfield, which I'm really excited for after losing to West Ham, personally. And by saying that, I'm being the most sarcastic person I could possibly be. I don't want this game right now. Thank you very much. But it's going to give me it. So play match, I suppose. Before that, we'll take a look at the news, I guess. Don't really want to. Higgins, decisive save against West Ham. I mean, I would have been all good and well if you we weren't 2-1 down. Higgins' effort on goal weren't enough to prevent Hartlepool United's defeat at the hands of West Ham United. Which allows him to thank for keeping the score only 2-1 to West Ham United. No, let's be right ahead of the line. has him to blame for conceding two. I, I like Higgins, man, but he's not ready for the Premier League. Maybe alone in January might be the move. But I don't really have another goalkeeper, that's the only issue. Um, Fine or beat Juventus. Mitchell and, yeah, cool. All the European results. Hartlepool take on Liverpool. Right. They've got a good side, but they've not had a good season. So, I guess we'll see what happens. Camavinga, Rodrigo. They've beaten us before. Player of the month, we don't have anyone in there. Got an actual and Tell nominated once again for Wolves. Tell won it last month. He'll probably win it again this month, to be honest. Him or Garnacho. Um, so, Maxi Man for Newcastle and Enrique from Longham Forest. It's a good group, to be fair. Decent group of players. Right, let's figure this out. Did, was that another hat trick for Lushik, or did he, or was that the one he scored before? He just scored another hat trick against Stuttgart. This man's on fire. Right. Up next, then, Liverpool. We've just got to go with our strongest boys, our best boys. They've got some tired players as well. Sula at right back. We need to take advantage of that. Wait. I thought Martinelli was at... I thought Martinelli was at Arsenal. Wasn't he in the Arsenal team? That must be a region then. I got so confused there for a second. See this imposter Martinelli is because I thought that was the Gabriel Martinelli. But I remember the play against Arsenal. I was like, wait, where I, does he play for two teams? Right, who's this kid? That's oh Roberto. Right. I mean, that confused me to fuck. <laughs> I was so confused. Right. Anyway, back into the uh, situation here against Liverpool. Quite a tired team, as we said. Do they have any? That's not Bruno Fernandes, is it? There's no way he's gone from City to Liverpool, right? I'm not going to check again because I don't want to, but... If he has, I'll be very upset. We'll just go with this squad, I think. Probably the best. Bulls now up to an 85, by the way. Madman. But yeah, we'll go with that squad. It's the strongest, it's the best. Let's see if we can win. I'm begging we can win against Liverpool. They're having a shit season. But uh, Nielsen in between the sticks. Sutherland and Miranda as the fullbacks. Chavez and Bowles as centre-backs. Diop CDM slash centre-mid. Sarno centre-mid slash Cam. 
Wilson off the left, Roberts off the right, Blanchard and Rodriguez up top. Our best team. Um, Rodriguez, of course, the captain. See if anything else happening at the same time. Anything going on? Brentford play Wolves, so that's another three points for Wolves, probably. Um, but hopefully we can get three points here at Anfield. It's going to be difficult, but we need them desperately now. So in this fourth game of today's episode at Anfield, it's Liverpool versus Hartlepool. Battle of the Pools. Don't you really need a backup to be honest? Keepers never get hurt. Half a season they can have all the games and reevaluate in the summer. Yeah, potentially, but knowing my luck, my keeper will get injured when I loan him out. United City Liverpool getting passed around the top six like a Kardashian gets passed around the NBA. It might not be Bruno, it might be a different Fernandez, but it'd be funny if it was Bruno. Here we go. Liverpool in full song for this one. They've not had a great season. Sat down in 15th now, I believe. But it can only go up, you'd hope, if you're a Reds fan. It's not Bruno, it's Gedson Fernandez for reference. And I'm surprised Rodrigo stuck around while his team has been in the dumps. And why Nunez isn't starting when his 89 rated now is beyond me. I suppose it's Darwin Nunez ultimately, isn't it? You'll always walk alone. <laughs> well. Can't help but hate Liverpool, but I feel sorry for them a little bit in this game because they're 15th. <laughs> it's quite funny to laugh at, to be fair, actually. Right, boys. Back on track now. We had a little slip up. Hopefully it's our rest... Or our, that's our uh, shit out of the way for the rest of December. We can focus on what we've got ahead and try to end the season or end the year at least in the top four place, but potentially top of the league. There's not many teams who have been top at Christmas that haven't won the league by the end of the season. So whoever's top at Christmas will probably most likely win the Premier League. So keep an eye on who's top at that point. Christ almighty. I mean, not bad. Not bad start. Maybe I'm underestimating Liverpool, but then again, they're... 15th, there's not really a lot to estimate. Not what I was aiming for, but it works. That was who I was aiming for in the first place, Duncan Wilson, but... No questions there, I suppose, too much. The up, Blanchard. Oh, you fucking... I feel like when I'm ready to just try and take a shot on him, try to turn the defensive right on me every time. Just searching Chavez. They're going to be good because they're Liverpool, but like, they're 15th as well, so I'm not expecting world class. Poke through to Rodriguez. Oh, -hoy. that was beautiful finishing off the weak foot. A good poke through from Duncan Wilson as well. 1-0. It could be a, I mean, in all seriousness, it could be a cricket score after this bad. Rodriguez giving Hartlepool an early lead here at Anfield. Good start. Yup, just a little, little warning tackle, not serious. Doesn't be a yellow, I hope. Interesting effort. By interesting, I mean, what the fuck was that effort? This could be a 
a situation where Liverpool are in the mud for a lot of the game. But then again, it could be a situation where Rodrigo digs him out of the dirt. So it's kind of like a 50 chance. How have I lost that? I'm sorry, how have I lost that ball? Good save, Nielsen. How have I lost that ball? I don't understand how the ball is not in my possession there with Billy Ball. First count, I suppose. I'll try to Rodriguez. guys. Serrano can make that run through. They're leaving way too many gaps. Oh, what? That, I was getting ready for turn. Oh, my God. I'm shit. I've just got to accept that I'm bad at the game. That should be 2 0. All over the place. Anyone with the braid scores that. Oh, my God. I'm. Just, I can't finish, apparently. That should be 2 0. Serrano putting it wide when it was easier to score, quite frankly. But they're leaving too many gaps. Their team's just simply not good enough. And I'm happy to say that we'll probably win this, but West Ham's team wasn't good enough and they beat us. So I'm not writing them off just yet. They've not been bad. They've still got Rodrigo. We're going to call it back for the foul. Sutherland there. Yeah, I know. All right. It was an awful miss. You don't have to tell me. Yup. Wilson's got room now. Oh, I can't get the pass off. Sula caught up somehow. I don't really know how. He's not the fastest player in the world, is he? Clearance only goes as far as Rodriguez. Wilson can't get that because he was offside. And Blanchard tried to go in, but with no success. Block there by Sutherland, but the ball's going to go through. Martinelli yeah I, I'm going to be honest with you I don't know what the fuck Nielsen's in uh, I, he's just lost, he's wandering around lost it's a great ball through and a great ball across but Nielsen's a fucking moron and that, that's what I mean with this this team, they've got Rodrigo he's just going to try and carry them here I'm not keeping the clean sheet today for reference There's no way I'm keeping a clean sheet against Man City. There's not going to be a clean sheet today. All sheets can be dirty. <sighs> it's good play, but I... Right, I'm not being fucking silly. I'm not, pl I'm not playing this shit. I feel like we're going around the circles here. What the fuck is the point in this? Someone's going to have to explain to me why this hasn't gone to fucking Chavez. Why hasn't it gone to Chavez? I've aimed it at Chavez. If this leads to a goal, I'm not playing the rest of the game. I'll jump to result. Genuinely. I'll give it to the most dangerous Liverpool player on the pitch as well. And nearly did lead to a goal. Why isn't that fucking passed to Chavez? Oh, mate. Favre, I think it was. Or Favre, I don't know how to pronounce it. Favre, maybe. But Nielsen back, uh, yeah, Nielsen back into action. We might just be shit. When I say we, I mean me. Like, I don't understand how it's one all. Miranda should have blocked that. Failing that. Nielsen should have been awake. Guys, I've got being silly, right? But why is the balance just going to them every time? Nicholas Sula nearly scored past me. Do you know how much of a morale damage that would have been? Serrano, just go, fella. Just don't look back. If I miss this, like, I'm like the worst in the world. I... <laughs> do you know what? I'm not playing. This is the last episode of this. I am an awful football player on this game. How am I not scoring there? I, don't, I can't explain anymore. I mean, on occasion I'll have excuses, but I just don't have any. I'm, I'm all out. I just I don't understand how that's not going on target. Uh, fuck that. That's your fucking... That's your fucking stupid mistake. Fuck off, Liverpool. Have that, you cunts. That's the goal that I should have scored to Roberts, but the game decided to put it over. Well, I said the game. I put it over. Uh, justice. I don't know what for. I've been playing like shit, but justice. Blanchard makes it 2-1. This game is 50 shades of fucked, I'll tell you that much. But as long as we win this, I'm not really caring. It's only if I lose this or don't get the three points out of this match, I'll be fucking pissed. 
Because why are the fucking teams that are in the... I, I get it's Liverpool, I'm aware of that. And they've got some good players. But why are the teams that are in the bottom half the ones that turn up against me? With the exception, of course, of Leicester. Good tackle, Sutherland. A little overlap. Yeah, these guys are fucking shit, but I don't understand why they're playing me off the park at the moment. Blanchard has just hit that with absolutely no power. That's exciting. <laughs> Wilson just jumped in the air, nowhere near the ball. <laughs> Jiga's going to get played for here, I don't know who he is, but try to get across with a man to stop it is impossible, apparently. Chavez, good defending. Sutherland. Blanchard, now Serrano. Sutherland continues his run. I didn't thought he continued a bit further, but he stopped. Kind of mid gallop. Serrano shot blocked. Gets it back. Wilson into Sutherland. No, oh, man. Oh, if this keeper turns up now, I'm going to be fucking so mad. We've got no fucking defenders because everyone's decided to come out of the top. Good save, Nielsen. Thank God, man. Everyone committed there. Even my, even Billy Bull was like, oh, let's just go for it, boys. Heavy touch from Roberts means I'm just going to get nothing. Cabral. I'm th I'm physically in the way of the pass. What the fuck? Diop's got the ball, but not got the ball at the same time. I blocked it, and it's still going to go through. I'm going to fucking scream. Rodrigo's just mad good. That's the problem. Fernandez could have an injury. Respectfully, I hope he does. Oh, man. It's just stress sometimes. He's going to go short as well. Even more stress. Soparenko. Blocked by Serrano. Kept him by Rodriguez. Or Rodrigo. Rodriguez is my player. Blocked by Wilson from our corner. This should have been a fucking destruction but for some reason Liverpool are in this in fact they're probably the better team one of the substitutes get mad at Klopp on the bench here yeah? well, he doesn't get started in this one I've done one of those emails where he said can I start this game and Klopp's like no Rodriguez I don't know Klopp's accent I know he's German but it's not a great Klopp accent is it I'm no I'm sorry like if I want to sweat that why isn't it just going directly to my player I've, I've passed it across I can't make this shit up I passed it across to Roberts and it's just decided not to go to him fuck off like I'll take the fucking shit on the easy missed chances but when I'm making a chance that should go directly to my player that is a tap in and it's just not locking on. There's nothing I can do about that. There's limits to what I'm able to do in this game. Diop, the target from Blanchard. Roberts can win that, keep it alive. Oh, what the fuck. Serrano, it's still alive. Diop. Oh, well. I've not bought the tap in at all. I'm not even going down that road. We're not even discussing that. <laughs> we're, not even, we're not even bringing that conversation up anymore. We're 2-1 up. That's all that matters. We're actually winning the game somehow. Their only good player is Rodrigo. And he's letting us know about it. We're struggling otherwise. Fucking hell. Wolves winning, of course they are. Shocker. As they just win every fucking game, apparently. 1-0 over Brentford at the moment. Chelsea drawing 0-0 with Newcastle, which is actually helpful for us. Both of them drop points because we need a fucking win and overtake them. Brighton and Spurs drawing 1-0 one all, one all between Manchester City and Bournemouth and 1-0 to Arsenal over West Ham. Norwich and Leicester will play later at Carrow Road. Take a look at the stats then. I think they've been better, honestly. I mean, it's 8-8, but we've had more expected goals. The mad thing is we should be like 3 or 4 up, but I just can't finish. 53 to 47 in terms of possession, 8 shots each, 3.5 is split to goals to 2.3. Uh, as you can see, they've had 100% shot accuracy, and I haven't. <laughs> but it's the way it goes sometimes. I just can't score, apparently. 
Anyway, I don't really know what to do. Because I know they're going to get an equaliser. I just... I'd like to get another goal ahead before they equalise. They get a scripted fucking equalising shit. Yeah, Anfield, faithful, try to sing Liverpool back into this game. There's been so many shit performances this season. They want to see a good one, and they've seen a good one. It's not been a bad performance in Liverpool, it's just... It's not been a good performance from us. In front of goal, I should say. We've been alright otherwise, but in front of goal, it's been awful from us. We should be three or four up. Wilson's got all the room in the world here. There's no way Sula's catching up, man. Crack it save. I just hate this game. Either the keeper will turn at Prime Neuer, or I just can't shoot a target. There is no in between. Martinelli coming up from Malero. Falling by Blanchard, perhaps. Could find Sutherland. Headed back, I believe, by Liverpool player. Into the hands of Yaros. Bowen's header. Serrano loses out to Malero. What the fuck is. What the fuck is Chavez doing? You might think I was controlling him and moving him there. I wasn't. He was continuing his movement from when the AI had him. Thank God for Nielsen, man. This episode has been a shit show, hasn't it? I just cross my head rate and go straight to a Liverpool player. Why is it when I'm passing it, or trying to pass it, to a player on my side, it doesn't ever go there. Sutherland does well to get past Fernandez. Counter is on here still. Blanchard. Rodriguez, stay on. Please tell me you're on. Of course you're fucking not! Why would you be? Oh! Five for coming off from Nunez. Oh man, we've got City next as well. I need to make some changes, but I can't yet because I don't trust us to fucking win this game. With if, like, you know, I just thought I'm gonna drop points still. If we get third, then I'll make a couple of switches, but. Sutherland! Make the fucking move, man. I'm not passing it into free space. I was meant for you, you stupid cunt. Ah, oh, here we go. Thank God Nunez has hit that with a toddler's power because that could have been too all. Ron Roberts, just go, mate. Get away from his club. Rodriguez, please. Right, thank God. Thank God we've got a striker that has an absolute eye for goal because everyone else is a fucking idiot. And I half expected to miss that as well. I genuinely half expected to miss that. It's a great ball through and Rodriguez has led it through, past the number four and finished it brilliantly. That's a striker's finish if ever I saw one. And I really should rest Rodriguez, but I think he's the only hope of, of me getting goals, so we're going to keep him on. And I don't really want to bring off Blanchard either, so I think the strikers will remain. We're going to bring off Robertson Barlow. And we're going to bring off Sutherland from Moffat. I think that's all we're going to make just now. That's an awful change because now Moffat's got to go against Rodrigo, but I need Sutherland at full fitness. Probably do need to bring on Ibrahim at some point as well, but I don't know if I want to accept that against Liverpool. We'll leave it for now. 3 1, thank God. Rodriguez gives us a two goal cushion. Go on, Billy. Yeah, he needs to. Ref. Uh, I guess it's probably El Carmen play stops, but. Ball needs to get subbed off, I think, because we need to keep him for the Man City game. He's been phenomenal this season. Blair Blanchard, I, I love that you're like a trickster in that, but there's no way to back heel it there, is there? Billy Bull, even in the midfield, he's just causing chaos. And now he's caused chaos with the back line because he's not there. Chavez covers it up. Miranda closes it down as well. And we could go again. There's, this Liverpool defence is non existent. I could be on a field day if I could actually score a goal. Charos, good save. It's going to be in our corner. 
This Liverpool team are shit, by the way. Like, they're uh, no wonder they're 15th. This Liverpool team is woeful. On comes Cade Gordon for Esposito. The fact that we have been so shit in front of goal and we're still leading 3 1 just shows how god awful this Liverpool team is. Billy Bull. Wait! Oh, Billy Bull scored a goal! He's finally put one past the goalkeeper, past the defender on the line! 4 1! And it's Billy Bull! About to bring him off for Prince Ibrahim, but. It's gone in! It's not been fucking stopped! Off the line. I don't know actually. Let's see. VAR. VAR coming in. Has Cabral done it in time? No, it's just over. We'll fucking take it. Billy Bull will take it. Billy Bull will not be complaining as he comes off the pitch now at 4 1 up. That should be the game. They might score one more, but that should be the win. Ibrahim comes on now for the big Englishman. Rest him for Man City because he is in the form of his life. Bit subpar against Arsenal, but beyond that, he's been great this season. And he's actually scored a header. It's only taken 116 attempts, give or take. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's taken a lot of attempts. I'm really hoping now this is where we just compare Liverpool, get as many goals as we can here for the goal difference aspect. Rodriguez. Oh, do you know when you pass it and it doesn't pass it? I've absolutely committed Miranda like an idiot, but that's okay. You just, you just, you see, like, when I'm trying to read what they're going to do, and the game just says, yeah, you've read it, but what reward do you want? They're celebrating that they're, they've got a second... It's 4-2. I don't know why they're celebrating so hard. That was awful for me, defending-wise. You laughed at my 4-1 predictions. Yeah, it's a <laughs> problem there. I thought Nielsen might not dive out the way as well, but you got to respect the fact that this game is stupid. Kate Gordon gets one back. He does come on and score, but... I tell you right now, if this goes 4-all, I'm not playing the City game. There's no way that this should the Liverpool should be getting back into this game at all. And if they do, I give up. I just give up. Barlow, I'm not being funny. Make a run, please, cunt. Right, Ibrahim, don't commit like an idiot. I say Ibrahim. When I say Ibrahim, I me. Me, don't commit like an idiot. I've got my Miranda. If they get back into this, I'm done. There's a goal from Gordon. I fully messed up with Ibrahim, but I thought Chavez might have enough to get it. He didn't, for record. D up. Head it down. Counter perhaps now. Blanchard. Rodriguez. Off he goes. Number nine. Speeding away. For the hat trick, perhaps. Carlos Rodriguez. He seals the hat trick. What a finish. This man is on fire. What a counter. And Rodriguez <laughs> scores again. He's so happy with himself. I think now I can confidently bring him off. Give him a bit of a rest before the Man City game. That's the striker. That's the Rodriguez I've been wanting to unlock this whole fucking series, man. Last year in the Premier League, didn't seem to be as much of a goal scorer. This year, he's like, you know what? Fine, I'll score. All right. On comes Carpenter for the remaining minutes. Rodriguez, big performance from him today. A hat trick. And we lead 5-2. You know how I said I wanted a 5-3 game like the Spurs and Luton one? I think I might be getting that if they score again. I'm going to put it past them at this rate. Double figures now for Carlos Rodriguez. I don't know if that makes him top scorer, but... Definitely double figures. Chavez heads it away from Nunez. We'll go again here. Sorry, we could go again if Carpenter could actually pass the ball. Diop's on a little foul there. The ref's going to bring it back as well, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I need to get a call somewhere close. Oh, um, right. Okay, Barlow. Carpenter. And now Wilson's got acres.
That's the one you save. The, my favourite player, and that's the one you save, you fucking cunt. Whatever, we're three up now. I'm not really too fast. Blanchard. Ball him. The up target. Carpenter's going to win that. Wilson. Ah, oh, well, it's got a D up. I don't know why it's not going to D up. Okay. I mean, in fact, I do know why it's not going to D up. I believe he's 23. How has Malero escaped that much when Miranda has 91 pace? What is this Liverpool defence, by the way? I've never seen a worse defence. Maybe Man United's in real life. Good interception by Carpenter, but the game's not going to give me a reward for interception. I would, you know, I'm only intercepted the ball. I'm only done what defending is meant to be done. Oh, he's gone inside me there. Good block by Moffat. Good block by Chavez. Six minutes of added time for fucking what? <laughs> Game's been over for like ages, bruv. Serrano. Barlow. Ah, oh, Cabral done well. Going to Blanchard, try to knock it on. Fucking hell, Liverpool players just flooding me now. Ah, oh, I've got... I fucked it up here, I might get another one. Nielsen was awake, <laughs> thank God. I thought for a second he just wasn't going to save it. Gordon nearly getting a second. I mean, the game's well and truly over, but could Liverpool get one more just to take as a consolation from this game? I bloody hope not. But I wouldn't be surprised if so. Rodrigo to deliver. He is exhausted. He's on his last legs. But Liverpool know he's the key to their only hope of getting anything out of this game. Well, that's game over. 5-2 uh, win. It was a bloodbath, but I'd like to have not conceded those two as well. It could have been more than five if I could actually finish my dinner a bit better. But in the end, it's a brilliant day. Rodriguez, match ball... And we will defeat Liverpool, who just seem to be in a downward spiral at the moment. Which is fine by me. Fuck Liverpool. A hat-trick from Rodriguez. Blanchard and Bull as well with goals. And um, a huge win for Hartlepool. I don't know if it should have been 5-2, but I'm not going to question the game. 50-50 to 50 in terms of possession. 15 shots to 14 in favour of Liverpool. 5.8 expected goals to 3.9 in favour of ourselves as well uh, but Chargers in the end didn't come out too bad and um, Chargers for them was a little bit better I'll kind of have a little look here 11 shots on target out of the 14 it's not woeful to be honest it actually in the second half I don't think we put a shot off target so we definitely improved but I wish we could have defended a bit better as well man of the match somehow does not go to Rodriguez it goes to Achille Blanchard who got uh, got us a goal and also got a brace of assists. So fair enough. Uh, nine rating for the Frenchman. An 8.1 for Wilson, who was alive all that time on all that game. But because we knew that we were just going to destroy Liverpool, it was quite easy for uh, us to get Wilson through on many an occasion. An assist and an 8.1. Could have had a goal as well, but that's when the keeper decided to turn up. A hat trick from Rodriguez and an 8.1. Somehow not man of the match. Billy Bull, no good display at the back. And a 7.8 rating as well because he scored a goal. Finally got that header in the back of the net. Nicholas Nielsen could have done a bit better, but also could have done a bit worse because he had 13 shots on his goal, 11 saves, still conceded two, but ultimately it doesn't matter long term. So that's really what it is. Uh, Roberts as well with an assist in 6.4. Didn't really set the world on fire uh, in that game, which means I might use Barlow against Man City. I guess we'll see. I suppose I better check Liverpool ratings as well. I don't really want to, but I suppose I better had. Um, Rodrigo was their best player. Rodrigo seems to be their only player. I don't think I've seen anyone actually do anything else for Liverpool apart from Gordon. Um, but 8.2 for Rodriguez and a goal as well. Um, Cabral got an 8.1 apparently at left back. He probably was the best of the back four, which is not saying much because the back four were woeful. But he was definitely the better of them. I'll give him that. Uh, Kay Gordon off the bench as well. Got a goal of 7.9. Assist coming from Martinelli at 7.3. Darwin Nunez as well, 7.3. To continue to read down, this how the rest of the team looks. Yeah, this is not... A very good Liverpool team at all. Unless they've just left some good talents on the bench. Which they have, kind of. But not all of them. 
I mean, they could have started Ramiro ahead of Jarosh. I don't know what the plan was there, the play was there, but ultimately, Liverpool are not very good, and it shows. And of course, might as well show it. I don't usually do it, but I suppose we're going to start doing it. When everyone gets a hat-trick, we'll see the hat-trick goals. There's the first one here from Rodriguez. Poke through by Wilson, and a beautiful smooth finish with the weak foot into the bottom left. I'll start showing full hat-tricks now, because they're quite cool. We don't get a lot of hat-tricks, do we? Look at that for a finish. Fet not met now. And then we have the second goal of Rodriguez's trio, which is played through here. And it was a thumping finish. Nicolas Sula left in the dust by the Peruvian Prince. It was a great pass through by Roberts as well. Just let it into his path and just smashed it in. No chance for Jaros. Oh, man. Rodriguez is hugging nobody, apparently. There was a fan there, but they must have gone home. And then the uh, coup de gras, the hat-trick goal. Beautiful, smooth finish. Again, his, <laughs> his goal seemed to be in the bottom left every time. Or on the left-hand side of the goal. I've noticed that. He's just very good at scoring football goals. And Rodriguez is going with those invisible fans again. Post-match interview then. Let's see what I've got to say. Great winning. Congratulations. No question all the headlines. I didn't read the end of it. Did Rodriguez's hat trick surprise you? No. It's just what he's capable of most of the time. Are you surprised by the comfortable victory that was? I mean, yeah. Because we were quite shit at finishing at first, but then we found our shooting boots in the second half and just put them away. One more game to go then today. Well, that game you always felt in control of. Uh, we deserved our goals. I mean, I wouldn't say in control of, but... Our finishing second half. First half, we couldn't fucking finish in the brothel, but... Second half, we were dynamite. And Rodriguez hat trick gives us plenty of plenty of um, confidence going to the game against Man City. Jack Cochran transfer offer from Celtic. Jack Cochran is someone I was wanting to move on, and twenty six point six million is not a bad offer at all. Would it be cheeky? Do you think if I pushed for a bit more? I think I'm just gonna accept that as it is. That's a great deal, to be honest. And they'd probably have a good time back to his home country. And probably have fun at Celtic. But that is how the table looks. Wolves have played in it. Nah, like, I'm not winning the Premier League title, am I? I think it's just got to be a race for second because Wolves are not slowing down at all. They are going. Even if we win, which is a big order against Man City, we'll only be within six points of Wolves. Wolves are gone. They might be the next Invincibles, genuinely. Who did they beat this time? Southampton, 3-2. It was close, but it still won. Mate. <laughs> See what I mean? Like, it's ridiculous. They're so good. I mean, it, it's a great team. They beat Brentford as well. But a win here would put us in a second. A loss here would put Man City a bit more into the conversation again. So... I don't, obviously, I want to win, but I don't know how we're going to go about it. And the fact that there's still a team that scored more than us, even when we're scoring for fun sometimes. Wolves are just... They're just mental. It's ridiculous. But anyway, we'll do this final game. Then. How long has this stream been, actually? It's not been too long, has it? I guess there's not been any transfer stuff to cover every time, so... It's been a little bit shorter, this one. What time are we on, actually? Because I need to go walk my dog... 10 to 4. Right, I'll warm my dog after this. Not too bad. Right. 
before we go into this game against Man City then, we'll take a look at the news. As always, Rodriguez hat-trick hero against Liverpool. Rodriguez scored the final goal of the game to complete his hat-trick. Now we seem to uh, see a 5-2 win against Liverpool. Assist leader as well, Rodriguez. He is finally showing what I know he could be showing in the Premier League. Finally, thank you, Mr. Number 9, because you're actually helping us a lot. Uh, team of the week, despite scoring a hat-trick, it's actually the other of the front men of Hartlepool that get into it. Uh, Achille Blanchard making team of the week, alongside Billy Bull at centre-back. Not too shabby there, and it shows Tony Springer, whoever the fuck he is, and he's joining Troy's when the window opens, if anyone interested. Arsenal draw to all Liverpool. Chelsea beat Spurs 1-0, which helps because Spurs are above Chelsea and nearer to us. Uh, Hartlepool take on Man City. Uh, it's the battle between two of the clubs in the pursuing pack. That usual headline. We know that. And a big game here because it's a derby. Nottingham Forest versus Leicester. And that is going to be a good one. And also, player of the month for November. It wasn't one of our players, mainly because we didn't get nominated this time. But it is another Wolves player, and you can't really blame him. Alejandro Garnacho on a madness at Wolves. And um, just to remind you of the nominees, it was Garnacho of Wolves, Tell of Wolves, San Maximan at Newcastle, and Enrique at Nottingham Forest. So those are your nominees, and that's what's happened there. And then the Hartlepool selection delights Rodriguez. Hartlepool United have a happy player on their hands. Carlos Rodriguez. I nearly died saying his name. I need to cough. Give me a second. Yeah, I nearly died saying his name. He must be a curse. The striker is very satisfied with how much playing time he's getting and says he can't even imagine what to play anywhere else. Yes, it's true that I'm enjoying my football at Hartlepool United and have a relationship, good relationship with Shabalala. He seems to recognise my value to his team. Now I best to try to repay that trust with good performances to help us move forward. I mean, he's been the best player by country miles so far in the attack, so... No complaints yet, mate. But anyway, then, the final game of today against Manchester City. I think they still have Haaland, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, they still have quite a good team. Right, let's just assess this team real quick. Alisson's still in between the sticks. As long as they don't swap him and um, whoever they swapped out last time, they should be fine. Mayo left back, Alvarez right back. I don't think it's that Alvarez. Botman Milenkovic, Phillips CDM, which is concerning, but also interesting as well. Pedri and Fernandez, which is a really good midfield, even if there is a snake among us. Foden, Haaland, Bakayoko is a solid front three as well. It's going to be a test, this one. Especially with Chavez being exhausted, we're going to have to bring in Ibrahim. I would have brought in Martin for this one, but he's injured still. So we're going to have to rotate Ibrahim in, which is not really what I want to do. But if there's one physical bastard that can deal with Haaland, it is probably Ibrahim. And we'll bring in Maresca as well. But Serrano will definitely be on the bench. Bishop to come on the bench as well. And I think Flores is what we needed, probably. So that is the team we're going to use against Manchester City. Uh, Victoria Park. It's Nielsen in between the sticks. Sutherland and Miranda as the fullbacks. Ibrahim, Bolt, centre-backs. Diop, CDM, slash centre-mid. Maresca, centre-mid, slash Cam. Duncan Wilson off the left, Roberts off the right, Blanchard and Rodriguez leading the line. Rodriguez captaining the side. It is going to be the final game of today, and I'll see what else is going alongside it. A few games here. We know Wolves have already played their game, but some that haven't, and those are the games that are on tap. But anyway, for the final game today at Victoria Park, Hartlepool United versus Manchester City. Let's get into it. It's a big occasion. What will the verdict be in this one? Three wins and one loss so far in today's episode. The one loss is a loss you'd least expect. Three two Rodriguez late winner. Oh manifest it, except for the two that we concede. I'd rather not concede, but if I have to to win, then fair enough. They've still got the robot, the cyborg up top at Manchester City. Good. Good luck. 
But we've got a very good team as well. I wish we had Martin as an option because I would rather have started him ahead of Ibrahim. But on the flip side, it gives Ibrahim some big game experience. Ball remains in because he is absolutely fantastic at the moment. I've realised I've got him the wrong way round. So when the lineups are done, I'll swap him around. Um, not bad defence. Okay, midfield. Good attack. And the bench, what have they got? Nobody incredible apart from maybe James Madison. Right. I rate our chances, you know. If they get tired, we can take advantage of this. It's going to be an intriguing one. Who's kicking off then? Victoria Park. So I think... I don't know, I don't know who they decide on kick off. I guess the coin toss, isn't it? But Haaland looks like he's walking towards the ball to begin proceedings. So before he does begin proceedings, we're just going to uh, do a little uh, switcheroo here. And we'll get into it. Manchester City versus Hartlepool. Actually, it's the other way around technically because we're at home, but you have a point. Final game of today. An action-packed episode. A loss to a team that you expect we beat and beating the teams you expect we'd lose to. Well, maybe you wouldn't expect we'd lose to, but the more difficult teams, anyway. What point? What Sutherland? Ah, fair touch. Bakayoko. To Bruno. Into Haaland. That's good play. I'll try to close it down anyway I can, but Foden's turned me for a sixpence. Good save, Nielsen. Foden just left me in the dust there. But City are looking strong out the gate, which is concerning for me, to be honest. But it's been a decent episode all in all. Nothing too, you know, awful, apart from the West Ham loss. Beyond that, it's been quite a good episode. Wins against Liverpool and Arsenal. Um, I think it was Meyer with a header. Didn't get a great header on it. We could counter. We also beat Norwich to open the episode. Just could have gone wrong. Oh, Blanchard. Thankfully, it didn't. I think Hallen's offside. He wasn't offside. And Nielsen's made an incredible double save. How was Hallen not offside? I swear he was, like, roamed off. But maybe I'm just... I'm, just, I'm probably just blind. Lucky I do need a eye test. So it wouldn't be surprising if I fucking didn't see things right. That's an incredible double save from Nielsen. To keep it nil-nil. Great play from Say. Again, Nielsen done it on the near post. City have come out firing. I'm not surprised. You expect them to be in the top four and they're an eighth. A win today wouldn't put them in the top four, but they definitely get them back in the conversation. Head of the way. Now, counter now. Maresca. Roberts. Go on, mate. You got the pace. You got the option. Oh, damn it. Fuck off, Meyer. I thought I'd sweated myself to 1-0 there. I think it was Maresca who... Or Blanchard, one of them provided the other option. It didn't work out. And now Haaland has got all the room in the world. It wouldn't let me switch to... Oh, my God, he's missed. It would not let me switch to Ibrahim. I don't think he would have got back anyway. How was Haaland, of all people, not made that 1-0? We've been a big let off there, boys. I committed bull all the way up like an idiot, which is on me. Tried to switch to Ibrahim, didn't like me. Really hoped Haaland wouldn't score, and he didn't. Thank God. Thank the Lord for that. Bit of an exciting game early on here. Oh, no. Oh, thank God, that's a foul. Oh, it's offside against Haaland. Not by much, you know. In fact, it's, it's a minuscule amount. It's not wrong, but it is the tiniest amount. Diop got caught lacking. Wilson to turn Alvarez. Rodriguez. Well, he's our best striker. Might as well thump one from range. Give Alisson a wake up. Diop wins the header over Haaland. Just shows how good Diop is. 
Miranda, I see you running in, but you're going to be mental on that. Stay outside. Oreska try to slot it in. Alisson, good reflexes, and Botman just makes sure. Clearing it away for a corner. It's been end-to-end -end stuff so far. So you had the early patch where they were dominating, but we've managed to turn it around. And now we're the ones with a corner. Akele Blanchard. In towards Carlos Rodriguez. Not going to happen. Maresca. Wilson. Gets caught by Haaland, of all people. Haaland on the defensive. That's just a scary fucking sight, to be honest. Randa thought he got there. He didn't. Ibrahim did get there. Get fucking floored. Ibrahim's just floored Erling Haaland. And I was worried about starting Ibrahim. Fucking okay, hell, that was a physical battle there. And my player won it. All I'm saying. Rodriguez. Gonna try to slot it away, and he does! There is no stopping this man at the moment. Carlos Rodriguez. He's on a madness. He's on a madness with a goal scoring. That's my number nine. You can keep your Haaland. We've got Carlos Rodriguez. He's in a different fucking level this season. Ball through by Blanchard. Despite getting pressed, he still manages to get a shot off. Alisson should be doing better 100%, but I'm just, see me caring. You see me caring at all. Number 11 this season for Carlos Rodriguez. Surely he's the top scorer now. Or at least he's tied with somebody, man. Like, he's been on a tear this episode. Hat trick against Liverpool, now opening the scoring against City. Not a bad start. That was for um, for Sutherland, so of course it's not gone to Sutherland. Now Haaland can be through to equalise instantly. Great save, Nielsen, man. I tried to catch up with Ibrahim. I wanted to put a tackle in, but I didn't want to risk giving away a penalty. My God. I don't know how it's only 1-0, by the way. They, they should have at least three. There's going to be a point where my luck runs out and I want to make sure I'm in a good enough spot that I'm still winning when my luck runs out. Because they are going to score. It's more a matter of when than if, isn't it? Great tackle by Carlos Rodriguez. Not only a defender, but he's a, or an attacker, but he's a damn good defender too. Miranda. Oreska. A Blanchard. Just needs to turn his man here. Botman. Ah, uh, but Milenkovic comes across. I tried to knock it into the path of either Wilson or Sutherland, whichever one was there further forward. And it didn't go either. Sutherland doesn't win the header, but Bakayoko can't knock it onto anybody. Billy Bullen will get the loose ball. Wilson. Sutherland. We definitely have the components for a Premier League title run, but they've all, we've also got Wolves to deal with. Oh, I didn't want it to go there, but Roberts was offside, I'm assuming. If we weren't, like, if Wolves weren't in the Premier League, I'd say we've got a very good chance. But I can't believe I'm saying that. Of all the teams I'm scared of, Wolves, by the way. They've got a mad team, though, at this point. Haaland's been set in there. There it is. It was a matter of time. No one's picking up Pedri. I don't know if Maresca or Diop. Not Maresca. Fucking. Is it Maresca? Who did I start? <laughs> One of the midfielders has just decided not to pick up Pedri, and there's the equaliser. Ibrahim can't get Haaland this time, and I tried to come across from Miranda. Pedri puts his foot through it, and then puts his foot through it, as you saw there. Right foot went through the ball, and then he puts foot through it with his left foot to score the equaliser. I mean, it was coming, really, wasn't it? The fact that they didn't go into the lead is something we should be thankful for, genuinely. But um, unfortunately, it's now one all. Roberts, Rodriguez. Might be one all for long. Oh, Rodriguez forces Alisson into a good save. Rodriguez is on smoke right now. Chavez is wondering why I didn't get the game. Mate, you were exhausted, fellow. He'll come on second half if Ibrahim pisses me off, but he's done well so far. Quite to let Haaland through there, but he also had strength Haaland earlier on. Blanchard. Rodriguez, Maresca, now Bull. Why not? 
that's why not. I mean, he's sent it back at first, and then second of all, Ison's still quite a good goalkeeper, so. No help either. I mean, City have had better chances, it seems, but both teams have a goal, so it really matters ultimately. Alan's surely offside there. Did the linesman just leave his flag at home? Am I, am I, or am I just dumb? I might just be dumb. I'm probably, uh, it probably is the fact that I'm dumb, but. Or I need an eye test, which is definitely true as well. I just thought he looked more offside than what he did, maybe. Foden coming short for the corner from Bakayoko. Definitely onside, though. It's just my eyesight, then. I'm just blind. Reska should get the ball here. Doesn't. Um, right. Ball should as well. Ibrahim. Priced on my eight. Grab hold up, Nielsen. Four minutes of added time. I don't know if there's going to be another goal before the half, but the chance might be on for Hartlepool. It's out to Roberts. There's no, I'm sorry, I like Botman and everything, but there's nobody who's faster than fucking... There's nobody who's faster than fucking um, Roberts. I his name for a second there, even though I just ran with him. I would say to get the goal before the break. It's a great run. But Billy Ball! What a tackle! One all at the break. You know what? Probably a fair result. If anything, City deserve to be ahead. If it stays one all, I'll take it. Pedri get the equaliser after Rodriguez opened the scoring. Unbelie unbelievable tackle. You're banned. I've had enough of you. One all at the break then. Cyborg hasn't scored, but his team have. 1 0 to Norwich over West Ham. 0 0 between Bournemouth and Luton. 0 0 between Burnley and Everton. Newcastle leading Brentford 1 0. And Nottingham Forest leading Leicester 1 0 as well. Cheering for any team who beats Leicester because they're my fucking nemesis at the moment. And yeah, we've been. Uh, it's been a bit one sided in terms of the stats. But uh, in terms of the scoreline, we're still in it. We're still very much in it, but you say would bring it to us. They want to be in the top four, and at the moment they're not, so I'm not surprised that they're putting a fucking performance in. 51 to 49 in terms of possession, 12 shots to 6, and 3.4 expected goals to 1.2. It's going to be a difficult second half. Might just have to weather the storm again, boys. Hope for a point. Which I will absolutely take a point, honestly. Just for reference. Oh, Christ, that was for Paul. I don't... Why does it do that? Yeah, give me it back then. Cheers. Right, Wilson should outpace Alvarez. Rodriguez. He's the best... I'm sorry. He's the best striker in the world. He's the best striker in the world. There is no fucking second choice. What the fuck was that goal? That was mad. That's the weak foot as well. He sliced it into the back of the net. That was mad. I'm sorry, Rodriguez might be the best striker in the world. In fact, there's no might be about it. It's 2-1 Hartlepool, completely against the stats. And Rodriguez is on for another hat-trick. If George's prediction is right, he's going to get it because he's predicting to let Rodriguez winner. Haaland got come through here Billy Bull says no thank you Mr. Cyborg fill <laughs> my holes Rodriguez fucking hell he is on a madness right now I don't understand why he's so good this episode but I'm not going to complain either I enjoy it Bruno's going to take a corner short to Bakayoko oh he's not he fooled me cunt ah oh, good save Wilson, Maraska, Rodriguez, Blanchard. Sometimes you forget Blanchard's there because <laughs> Rodriguez has been so good, but at the same time, he has been set up quite a few goals as well. Maraska to make it three. Oh, unlucky. Maybe we could have passed it to Rodriguez, but 
Number 15 probably would have stepped across. Just took a shot on with uh, Fernando Maresca. Didn't come to fruition there. Before we go any further, we're going to bring on Serrano. Nothing against Maresca, I just prefer Serrano. Breaking early when Haaland has gone missing last scene in Billy Pool's pocket. <laughs> True. I said bringing on Serrano like he's going to do something big. He's done nothing this episode either. But ultimately, he's not really needed to. It's been good without him. Haaland's had five shots and still and put one in the back end there. That's all I'm saying. Randa wins the header. Rodriguez. Does it through to Blanchard? Yeah, Rodriguez is definitely a striker because I don't know where the fuck he's aiming that. Probably could have taken a bit more time on that one as well, but that's awful. Just genuinely awful. And it just shows that only one of my strikers can be on form at a time. Like, it's irritating, but it's true. Like, in that last episode, Blanchard scored a few. And Rodriguez wouldn't score, but then... Fucking... Rodriguez has scored tons this episode, Blanchard won't score. Ignore the fact that he scored last game, but it's not a point. But one will score more than the other. Like, it's not... Like, close. Good block by Ibrahim. Can I stay as Ibrahim? No, I've got to go back to Diop for some reason, even though I don't need to. That's a great interception from Ibrahim, and I was doubting him. I was doubting Ibrahim. Yeah, I know, it's an awful miss. All right. Should we use this by now? Should be normality at this point. Wilson. Oh, that deflected cross went perfectly to Rodriguez. Nearly got the hat trick there. Ball taken off in by Milinkovic, Sutherland. He's back into the path of Wilson. And Milinkovic again. A brick shit house at the back, some would say. And I'd say, yep, he's a fucking big man, isn't he? Oh, Christ. Prince Ibrahim closing down Haaland again. I know you said last scene in Billy Bull's pocket, but Ibrahim's done a fucking. about as much, if not more, to deal with the big number nine. Right. Miranda, I love you and everything. But that's where you run. Do your overlap. Forrest go 2 0 up over Leicester. Why can't we beat fucking Leicester? Everyone else can. Even Forrest can beat him. A bit more for Sutherland. I was going to take it on my own, but the dribble's gone the wrong way. Rodriguez. It's back to back hat tricks in the number nine. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. He's just. Everything he touches turns to goals. I think it's got to be Rodriguez's thumbnail, man. Like, what the fuck? The pass was meant for Wilson, but we don't need to talk about that because it's Rodriguez that has got back-to-back -back hat tricks against Manchester City and Liverpool. This man is on a different fucking level. That's third. He's got to be top scorer now if he wasn't before. 13 goals in 14 appearances for Carlos Rodriguez. Back to back hat tricks. It won't be a Rodriguez late winner, but it might be a Rodriguez winner. Fucking hell. Blanchard. Could have made it four, but Ali saw what a good save. I'm wondering, should I bring off fucking Rodriguez? Blanchard will bring off actually because what's the point of bringing off Rodriguez when he's on this kind of form? Kaufman Turk comes on. Phillips coming off as well for James Madison. Interesting to have Madison at DM, but I want that man deep in my holes. Fucking hell, sell Blanchard ASAP. I could do. I get that Virginiak from Real Madrid. In all seriousness, I'll probably keep the attack we've got now. We've been really good. Blanchard's not been as great, but again, there'll be a point where a penalty or a free kick. Sven Botman with the card. I don't know if that was in or outside the box. I think it was just outside, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. It's just the way that he fell over inside. I thought maybe. 
Rodriguez had a chance to get number four in this game. Well, can he get his fourth goal today and make it 4-1? Locked. The rebound will come back to him, but he's headed it away. Fuck it. Okay, right. You know what? Fair enough. Close down. Ball. Oh, that's awful. And they can counter off it. Holding in space. Ball over, should be won by Diop. It's going to come to Miranda in the end. We'll get it away. Serrano, Rodriguez. Roberts. Carpenter. Can't do in that little space. Alisson makes a save, though. After Rod, love today's stream as always. Looking forward to the next stream whenever it is. No worries, man. It's good to have seen you. You've been here for most of it anyway. You're really missing about the last 20 minutes or so, so not too bad. Finishing this game off and then doing the rundown. But yeah, no worries, man. Hope you enjoy your day. And I should be live soon again, hopefully. Ebra! Oh, what the fuck? Where the fuck? No, right. How's that going over there? Rodriguez! Oh, have it, Haaland, you can't! The up. Sutherland. Carpenter. Ah, uh, tried to get it into Serrano. It didn't work. The up blocks. Doesn't get a second ball, unfortunately. How would he? It's easier to rebound it to them than me. Borden. So I took it all the way in. Ball inside, should be got by Nielsen, it's saved for the rebound, of course, it's going to go in, because of course it is, it's FIFA 23, Pedri gets another one, and it could set up for a grandstand finish. I mean, I've done well, <coughs> excuse me, give me a second. I've done well to get Nielsen to make the initial save, but these rebound goals, not fun. And now it could be a grandstand finish here at Victoria Park. 3-2. The scoreline prediction might be right from Jordan. It's not quite the late Rodriguez winner, but um, it is going to be 3-2, it looks like. Maybe even 3-all, potentially. I don't know where this is going to go yet. Maybe Carpenter can seal a deal. Good save, Alisson. Thought Miranda might cut that out a bit better as well, but upon him not doing, I thought it would be an easy save and a clear, but it was a save and a rebound goal because why not? Am I right? Wilson, ball in. Roberts, the uh, target? North corner. And there's the goal from Pedri. Nobody in the net. Couldn't really do much about it. Tried to get rid of it, but it didn't happen. Wilson. Towards Sutherland. Carpenter. Ball. Carpenter. I'm running out of space. Oh, no. Fuck off. No, no chance. There's no chance for it. Good block by Ball. It's just going to go straight through anyway. Great save, Nielsen, man. It just bounced back to them whenever I got a tackle in anyway. Now it's a corner to Manchester City. And Alisson might make the run up to go for the equaliser here. He has indeed. Alisson up. Manchester City. It's away. No Roberts. Needs to get away. Oh, Carrillo's done so well. Carrillo's done so well to catch up with Roberts there, man. But the ball is now down this end. We should be okay, hopefully. Sutherland. 
Wilson. Corner now, Carrillo's giving it his all. But we just need to keep it up this end. Latest of the saves from Ali Son, who's not 37. We just need to hold on now. If they counter, we need to make sure they don't score from it. Wilson. Sutherland. Serrano can keep it alive. Carpenter. Or Robert, sorry. Across. Sutherland. Why? What the fuck? <laughs> He's a left back, I suppose. And the matter of... The fact of the matter is... I can't speak. That's what the fact of the matter is. But ultimately, we've ended up on top. It's another hat-trick for Carlos Rodriguez. Back-to-back hat-tricks. First against Liverpool. Second against Manchester City. It's phenomenal. He is on smoke right now. I don't want to. I don't want to end the episode. Kinda, just so I can continue his run. But obviously, we've done our five games, and I've got stuff to do. So, fortunately, that will be the uh, the end of this episode. Once we've obviously done the uh, closing statements, it's not a court case or anything. But you know what I mean. Take a look at the stats. 55 to 45 in terms of possession. 18 shots to 17 in favour of ourselves as well. 4.4 is split to go to 4.2 in favour of Manchester City. That could have so easily gone the other way or even been a draw. But thank God we saw it out just about. Man of the match. There he is. Carlos Rodriguez deserves it, of course, for the hat trick. Once again, and the 9.1 for the Peruvian Prince. I think we've got a title of the episode and put his thumbnail in after him today. An absolute wonder of a performance. Sutherland with an assist and an 8.4. Duncan Wilson as well with an assist and an 8.4. Nielsen could have done a bit better, I suppose, but again, he couldn't have done much worse either. 12 shots, 10 saves, 2 conceded. I guess he tried his best. Billy Ball done well again. Ibrahim, I thought, done better in the 6.7, but who's counting? Um, the other assist coming from Achille Blanchard with a 7.1. Diop was a little below par, but nobody else can really take that position from him, so that's why he's lucky. Phil Foden was given man of the match for Manchester City, even though Pedri got the brace to give them a chance and an 8 rating. But Phil Foden, 8.2. Did try and create as much as he could, but couldn't find the net past um, Nicholas Nielsen today. Bjorn Meyer, a decent defensive performance as well. Erling Haaland may not have scored today despite having numerous opportunities, but he got an assist and a 7.8. Looking down the rest of the team, I just kind of see their ratings at this point for Manchester City and see what's going wrong. I mean, it's not really that bad of a team at all, I guess. Apart from the fact that they still have Calvin Phillips at DM. I think that's probably the main the main issue. But beyond that, it's actually a really good team. But uh, anyway, I think that's it. Of course, the new thing. Whenever we score a hat-trick, I don't think it'd be so quick to do it again. We watched the hat-trick through. Here's the first goal of Rodriguez. Got away from the number six. Slotted it in past Ali Sonny. Should be doing a lot better. But who's complaining? Not me. That's all I'm saying. I, I love it. We've got through... And that was the first goal to put us 1-0 up at that point. And I think this second goal put us 2-1 up, if I'm not mistaken. Wilson on the edge of the box of Rodriguez. That was a phenomenal shot, by the way. That back shot was... It was sliced to perfection. It's like a chocolate cake. Sliced to perfection. It actually doesn't look as good now because I've seen, uh, I've realised that Alisson got hands to it, but it's still pretty good. So I guess we'll take it. And then the third and final one of the trilogy. A bit lucky, but still a good finish nonetheless. And it finds the back of the net anyway, which is all that matters when you think about it. And it's a 3-2 win. Manchester City brought it close, but in the end, the victory goes to Hartlepool United. Post-match interview time, me thinks. I did check their ranks, didn't I? Yeah, Foden was our top player. Yeah, right, I remember now. All right, let's see what we've got to say about it. We end the episode as well in second place as well. Six points by Wolves, but still. We're in it. We're in about it.
Rodriguez's hat trick surprise you? Um, no, because he just got one the previous game too. <laughs> He's a madman. He's a madman of a guy. I love it. You think there's room for improvement when you're out of possession? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> ultimately, we got the win in it. Like you read out the win, but then when you let the goal on, it's on the victory might slip away. Nah, we always had it. We got the fact that they scored an equaliser. Be worried about Man City's let go. I mean, winning is, yeah, winning is what counts. Right then, what an episode from the boys. What was the player chat? I don't really care about the progress assessment. The player chat. Maresca's happy to, to be whatever. Um, he did alright. Didn't do anything spectacular, but it wasn't bad, I suppose. But, I'll tell you one guy who was good. He's on that picture. Carlos Rodriguez, back-to-back -back hat tricks against two big teams. You love to see it. Fucking hell, Newcastle will conceded nine. Mate, fair play. Can't get mad at that. Taking a look at the table then to end episode... Is this four? Episode four of season eight? I believe it is four. But yeah, taking a look at the table to end it. Wolves still clear by um, a good few points. Invincible season could be on for them still. In fact, it is on for them still. 12 wins out of 14. Six points clear of second place Hartlepool United, who are in there like swimwear, but there's a lot of competition. Uh, Spurs third currently with Newcastle in fourth on goal difference. Chelsea have that Europa League spot with Arsenal in sixth. And then it kind of falls away a bit. Man City a bit further behind. Now nine points off a Champions League spot. Leicester as well not doing much better. Um, Man United up to 10th now. Getting back into the top half of the table. And Liverpool... Um, are not going to be seen because my thing decided to change the competition for no reason. Um, but they're down now in 16th. Two wins, six losses, six draws. And they're going to be put into a relegation battle, it seems, because they're not doing very well at all. Um, the relegated to or the relegation teams at the moment are West Ham, Brentford and Luton. Despite that win against us today, West Ham still languishing in the bottom three. With Luton up next, if we fucking drop points to them, I'll be dropping myself. So I'm saying. Anyway, it's what I want to look at. And if there's anyone else higher than Rodriguez, the game's a joke. But the top scorers right now, yeah, he's uh, he's positioned himself at the top. He's had a great episode. I don't know how many he's scored all together today, but back-to-back -back hat tricks against Liverpool and Manchester City. You can't really be mad at, to be honest. He's got 13 goals and 14 appearances now. He's taken top spot. Second place is... Enrique of Nottingham Forest, and there's a three uh, four way tie, I should say, between Rodrigo of Liverpool, Havertz of Chelsea, and Garnacho and Tell of Wolves on eight. Taking a look at assists, then, in fact, actually, we've got any more players in here. I think Blanchard should be in here somewhere. Uh, I think he has five, right? Oh, he doesn't make it in. <laughs> I think he's on five, though, for reference. Uh, joint top assisters, then, Sobrano, Rodriguez, and Blanchard, all on six assists. Um, at the Garden, Olmo on five each, but Olmo's is so impressive because he's only played seven games. So fair play to Danny Olmo. Uh, Duncan Wilson with four assists as well for Hartlepool. Anyone else in here um, for Hartlepool? It doesn't look like it. And then the clean sheets, Edison and Lopez for Wolves now joint top on four. Three clean sheets each. A uh, five-way tie. Two of Leicester's keepers have three clean sheets. That's mad. Uh, Onana, Koneshi and Nielsen also have three. So that's how it's looking on the clean sheet board. We're looking quite good. I'm quite happy with this so far. A little squad hub check at the stats here as well. Appearances, Rodriguez and Blanchard make the most with 15. And with goals, it's not even a question really, is it? We know who it is. Carlos Rodriguez, 14 goals and just 15 appearances. Absolute beast. He is turning in, into what we always wanted him to be. Now 25 years of age, but not slowing down by any means. I suppose 25 years of age, you're not slowing down at all, are you, really? Seven goals as well for Blanchard now, who is not... I wouldn't say not doing well, 
But with the recent success of Rodriguez, he's been pushed into the back a little bit once again. It always seems to be one of my strikers that pops off. Never both. Serrano with three. Roberts with three. Wilson with three. I should mention as well, Shablal also has three, but he's out on loan at Bournemouth. Uh, two for Carpenter, two for Carlson. One each for Bull, Diop, Barlow and Bishop. And then the assists coming from Juan Carlos Serrano, who is currently at the top with that assist in the Carabao Cup. He puts himself above his striker competitors for assist. High, well, highest assist total in the club. Seven for him, six each for Rodriguez and Blanchard, four for Roberts, four for Wilson. I'm glad Roberts is getting more contributions this season. Three for Carpenter, one each for Chavez, Sutherland, Diop, Maresca, and Bishop as well. And a little check on the loan growth, see how we're going. Armstrong up to 74, Jasper Reeler up to 71, Eander Kosi up to 63, and Riley McGregor, or Reese McGregor, I keep want to call him Riley, I don't know why, but Reese McGregor up to 78. Not too bad on the loan stuff there. Also, well, more loans going through, of course, in January. And as for contracts, I don't know why people are getting upset about them. They're getting quite a lot of money. Um, somehow, his market value has gone down for a tree because that's probably because he's aged, I would assume. But anyway, that is going to wrap it up. Anything else I need to check? I need to check the news, but I'm just thinking before pre-news. Of course, I want to check Martin's injury. When is he back? He shouldn't be too long, really. Um, Seven days. So after the Luton game, he probably is back. Also up next, uh, in the next episode, we'll be completing the rest of the December games. We kick off at Kenilworth Road to take on Luton. We're then back at Victoria Park to go against Everton before travelling to the south coast to take on Brighton at the Amex Stadium. Four days later, we'll return back to the Homestead to take on Chelsea and we'll finish 2029 with an away game against Brentford before moving into the new year to take on Norwich at Carroll Road. And our next big game, of course, we've got Leicester, who have been our fucking thorn in our side, uh, is on the 19th. But our next huge team is not till the 2nd of February now, so we've got a bit of a break. Liverpool as well around there. And then Arsenal, United in March. Chelsea in in uh, April. And then Wolves in May, along with Spurs and Newcastle. So it's going to be an interesting end to the season. I'm interested to see what we're going to do this season, because as much as I would like to win the league, Wolves are fucking off with it. So that's maybe out of maybe out of an idea there, but I reckon we get top four, and I reckon if Wolves do slip up, maybe we can win the league. I'm not going to say anything too soon that we're going to, but we're definitely in the race, and it's just a matter of if Wolves slip up rather than anything else. We can keep the performances going up as long as we can, but Wolves need to slip up. That's what we're reckoning on. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call it there. Just a quick news check before we do. Um, Luton beaten by Bournemouth. I mean, everyone's beaten Luton this season, nearly. Hartlepool triumph over Man City. Two teams fighting to get to the top of the table met, and it was Hartlepool United who emerged victorious against Manchester City. They'll hope the win will be a springboard to get off on a run of form in order to close the gap at the top. Rodriguez gets another hat-trick, back-to-back hat-tricks for Carlos Rodriguez as he scored a thrilling hat-trick to overturn or overwhelm a woeful Manchester City in Hartlepool United's 3-2 win. The... Uh, 2-0 win over not, or for Nottingham Forest over Leicester City is news as well. And the Ballon d'Or, I've clicked off of. But the Ballon d'Or is going to be contested between four players. Vinicius Jr., Victor Ozymen, Erling Haaland and Kvitscha Kvaratskhelia all in the running. Maybe next year this man might have a say of whether he's going to be in there. Pace setter for the Premier League, Carlos Rodriguez, 13 goals in 14 matches. And projected goals seems to be 35. Competition record is 32. Remember, this was before um, Erling Haaland got his 36 or whatever it was, 38, however many he got in that season, last season. So, pace setter, he could still break the record technically in game. Will he break Haaland's record? Will he even break that record? I don't know. He does like to slow down mid season, but I guess we'll see. But anyway, I think that's everything covered in its entirety. I'll try to remember to check the Ballon d'Or winner, but Vinicius Jr., Victor Ozymen, Erling Haaland, and Kvitscha Kvartskelia, the nominees. I'm just curious, because I've not seen much about the other two. I know that Ozymen's 90 rated because he moved to Roma. I know that Haaland's 94 because he is... He just played against us, which is his rating. Vinny is at 92. And Kvitscha... He is at 90. Still at Napoli, to be fair. Uh, but just to double check. I know Haaland's, but I'm just checking Aussie Benz. Yeah, he's still at 90. I guess just for completion as well. Fuck it. 
all the uh, Ballon d'Or nominees getting scattered a little bit here. He is, uh, yeah, he's in a madness. Probably going to be the one that wins the Ballon d'Or, to be honest, even though I don't know if he deserves it. Man City didn't do anything incredible last year. Uh, but anyway, that is going to wrap up another episode of the Hartlepool United career mode. It has been a pleasure once again. It's, I'm, I'm upset we lost to West Ham because we could have had a perfect episode otherwise. But it is just the way it be sometimes. And maybe next time we'll have a perfect episode. I guess we'll see. As we end out December 2029 next time and we head into January. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. And we'll be plowing through these and get to the end of this series ASAP Rocky. Hope you guys have enjoyed, like I said, for the third time, and peace.